Hello and welcome to the 8th round of the Tom Oswald Cold Cleo series. Inside SimRacing.tv, the fastest show on the internet. Sim racing news and reviews since 2007, with new shows every week. Hello and welcome to the eighth round of the Tom Oswald Cole Clio series, presented by the Touring Pro Series and supported by Tom Oswald Cole himself, Team Hard and GamePod, among many others. I'm Ryan Callan and I'm joined today by Scott Woodwiss. Hello. And also joined by Tom Oswald Cole himself. Welcome, Tom. Thank you very much. That's good to be back. It's been a long time since we've seen you, Tom. You've been very busy in the uh, in the meantime so we'll be catching up with you on uh, all your doings in the real motorsport world uh, during the broadcast but uh, on to the subject of today which of course is the eighth round of the tox as it is known and there are 10 rounds of this championship so this is uh, the round with three rounds to go so we've got two races here tonight two races are 23 laps along with two qualifying sessions for you we'll also be giving away 
a bit of TOC merchandise for you, TOC merchandise, uh, to one lucky viewer. So keep your uh, mouse at the ready, and uh, we'll be directing you to our TPS Facebook page at some point, and also be giving away um, a bit of merchandise to uh, Driver of the Day, as voted for by Tom Onslow Cole. As we say, this is the eighth round of 10 of the championship. There are, that means there are six races to go with the championship because there are two races per event, of course. And we're at Silverstone. Silverstone National Circuit. Very, very simple layout. Bit boring to drive, but it is not boring to race at all. Provides fantastic racing. And the team, the championship is also looking very tasty indeed, isn't it, Scott? It is indeed. We've got Jack Keithley sat atop with a nice big lead of 649 points. But look at the battle between second and third. Talborg and Davies both on the same team, separated by one single point. So that battle today is going to be absolutely fascinating. What's also going to be key is that the other guys below, we've got Simon Kielow, John Monroe and Alexander Lauritsen, all precision drivers. They're going to be out to try and maximise the scores from both races for Keithley because he needs every point he can get going to these two races and also the final two rounds at Snetterton and the season finale at Knock Hill. So that's going to be pretty crucial as well. Same with the team's championship. Precision are lacking behind by 65 points. Again, THR Orange are there because they've got their guys in second and third. But again, Monroe doesn't score any points because, of course, he was there joint Precision halfway through the season. Mm -hmm. uh, so Lauritsen, Kielov and Keithy are going to be the only guys that are going to be scoring. So again, Kielov and Lauritsen, not only are they going to be help helping Keithy get as many points for his driver's tally, but also try and maximise their scores um, for the team's championship. So ideally, they want a 1-2-3 with... Keithy, Talborg, and no, sorry, Keithy, Keithy, Keelov, and Larrison in that in no particular order, I guess. And, We've got uh, the wrong standings. Really We've got the wrong standings there as well, actually, guys. I do apologise for that. We'll add them <laughs> properly in for you now. I'm not quite sure how that's happened. I did uh, <laughs> go to change that, but uh, decided obviously not to do that. And um, well, we'll sort that out for you later. If you want to see yeah. these standings, you can go to touringproseries.com and click on the Tom Ozzacol uh, Clio, uh, Clio Series logo and click standings. Now, on to the track itself, um, Tom. Um, it's a very simple track, as we were saying, but there are, there's plenty of room for dicing. Uh, exactly that, and I think actually with the more simple circuits, you know, comes the closer racing, but also as a driver, it's, it's more of a challenge. Um, because there's only really sort of four real corners here, um, you have to make every single one count. And in qualifying, you know, you really need them perfect. The guy that puts this on pole is going to have had to have hooked up, um, you know, one of the best laps they've driven here so far. Absolutely. And of course, we've got new Clios. So last time we, we, we were with you, it was the 2008 Clios, in fact, 2006, the ones you won the, uh, the UK championship in. But we've now transferred to the 2013 model. What's your take on this, uh, this new model? Uh, I've just been watching the cars go around the circuit and they do seem to handle slightly different. But uh, I think first and foremost from, from the outset, you know, these cars look awesome. The new liveries um, that have been put on the cars look great as well. And um, I understand the racing's closer, closer than ever. So I think no complaints from my side of things. Yeah, it get, somehow it got closer at the last event, uh, Scott. It was the, it, usually in Clio's it's close enough, but it was even closer at Croft. It, quite hard to believe. It was. It's a fantastic spectacle with the two races. We had victories for Toby Davis and also it was Jack Keith who got a victory as well. So that was great wins for them in strengthening their championship positions. And I think it's fair to say if the racing is as hot as the temperature is right now in the UK, I think we're in for some absolutely scorching races today. Sorry to use the, the, the pun there, but I had to get fit something in with the weather. You had to but, put um, something in there. He's done it for a bet. He's done it for a bet. <laughs> And uh, uh, to all the, our viewers, if Scott disappears halfway through the broadcast, it means he's melted. Because he's, had to, <laughs> he's in his room and he has to shut his window because of mm -hmm. uh, background noise. So uh, he's doing it for the love tonight. So we're all doing it for yes. the love. Even, even Tom there. So uh, we've obviously set the scene for this event as well. But of course, this is not the only series we've run in Touring Pro Series at the moment. Virtual V8 Supercars is also in full flow and a fantastic event at Oran Park. I don't know if you managed to catch any of that, Scott, but uh, a great, great um, battle between Rietveld and Talborg. And that was, uh, that was a fantastic battle between the two championship protagonists, which you haven't seen all season, in fact, close on track. They've always been separated somehow, but been close in championship points. And they went tete a tete, mano a mano. At, uh, at Oran Park, and it was fantastic racing, fantastic to see two top drivers be patient with each other and aggressive and mix up the strategies, all kinds of things as well. So um, it was a classic, classic race. If you missed that, you can go to our YouTube channel and click on uh, probably the latest link, I would say, the latest, latest upload we have, and that was uh, round seven from Oran Park of the Virtual Supercar 2013 Championship. Remember, Talborg is the reigning champion, while Rietveld 
has six, uh, five wins in the season so far, but he's now trailing in the championship. Uh, just on the subject of virtual vehicle supercars, of course, as well, we go to Sandown next up. And that is on the 30, uh, 27th of July, as you can see right there, Saturday. So an early Saturday evening. Settle down and enjoy that. Sandown Raceway, fantastic track, Scott. Uh, but one we've never raced before in the TPS. No, it isn't. Sandown always does produce great races. Of course, in real life, in the V8 Supercars, it hosts the. F it's always the first of the Enduro season. Of course, you get Sandown. You, you kind of go to Queensland, have a couple of double headers. They have a very long one, and it's all the the road to the big one, which is of course Mount Panorama Bathurst, the thousand kilometer race, which is extremely historic, one of the most fa famous touring car races in the world, if possibly not the most famous. So these guys are pretty much on the road to Bathurst, which is of course the last round of the championship. Getting into the last few rounds, of course, is this one more round, and of course, then we get to Bathurst. So all to play from the championship between those and also I want to quickly point out is that Jesper Talbot was incredible in fact that he was taking part in that race on the same weekend he was doing a 24 hour race which in fact he actually won his class with which is actually yes, fantastic he did, yeah. so he did two yeah. race weekends in the same one he did a fantastic job in both he did and that's uh you know, dedication to the sport, no doubt about that. And uh, people questioned perhaps Jesper's motivation early in the, uh, the Virtual V8 Supercar season with him being the reigning champion. And uh, it seemed the motivation had dipped a little bit. But that does not seem to be the case at all, especially not last weekend, at least anyway, at Oran Park. Now, we've got a few minutes to go until qualifying here, which gives us a chance to, uh, to quiz Tom a little bit. And um, Tom, you've, uh, you've got a, a big announcement about an Aston Martin hookup. Uh, yes, I have indeed. Um, on the uh, 27th and 28th of this month, um, I will be uh, taking part in my first competitive run in the uh, Aston Martin Vantage GT3 car. So uh, we're doing a round of Brick Car. Uh, it's a three hour race on the Brands Hatch GP circuit and um, I'll be joining the owner of the car, Paul White, and uh, one of the directors of Aston Martin Racing, John Gore. So it's a, a great step for me towards um, you know, opening the doors in, in GT racing. So when you get old, you think you'll go into GT <laughs> racing? <laughs> uh, well, actually, that was my tact for trying to get the drive. You know, I, I went in there with the approach that I hadn't kind of failed my current career just yet. Um, and you know, I was interested in GTs before that ever happened. And mm -hmm. um, I think you know, GT is a very strong uh, a strong series um, for me as a, as a professional driver and it's something that I would definitely like to take on at the future and things are going well in touring cars so you know why not make hay while the sun's shining. And speaking of uh, touring cars I mean you've had an excellent I think you've probably exceeded maybe your own expectations actually for this season along with many other people's expectations you know because you know Team Hard uh, it never been really at the front of the uh, forefront before. Then, then they were suddenly running a four-car program, which seemed ambitious to everyone on the outside. But uh, I mean, your results especially have been uh, fantastic this season. Several podiums, including one last time out at, at Croft. Yeah, it has been. Um, it's been really, really positive. You know, we're halfway into the year, and we've already got three podiums under our belt. Um, and th things that are progressing nicely. It, it's been very tough. You know, it was tough from the off. I think I spoke last time about how difficult it was to actually get the cars to the grid and you know the team did a fantastic job in that and and since then we've kind of still been on the back foot we've been trying to just keep up um, with the maintenance of the cars let alone trying to d develop them so we're, we're in the middle at the moment of a, of a seven week break and it's actually been uh, very very useful for us we've had a small test uh, a two day test at Snetterton but we've had a lot of time to pull the cars apart and kind of build them back together again. You know, things were put together quite quickly, um, and there were little bits and pieces that we would have liked to have done before, but never had the chance to do. So we're actually hoping that we're going to start the second half of the season on even stronger form and make these podiums uh, an absolute regular thing and, and look for the odd win here and there. I mean, what has been the biggest issue for yourself, not just obviously the logistics side of things, but actually um, extracting the speed from the car, what has been the biggest obstacle in terms of, of, of driving the car? Um, the early development of the car was, was quite easy for me. The, um, you know, initially it's, it's done on driver feedback, so I could feel that you know, the spring package was too soft at the front and so on, and so we could increase that. The rear geometry on the car doesn't work so well, so we kind of locked that out and took that out of the equation for a little while. Um, but it got to the point where I'd done everything that I could um, I could feel and there was inherent issues in, in the front end of the car, uh, specifically in the middle of the corner, um, you know, off throttle at the apex. We had a lot of understeering in the car 
and I could feel something strange going on but couldn't quite put my finger on, on what it was and it wasn't uh, until we managed to get the actual geometry modelled in uh, in CAD that we could mm -hmm. actually see the, the movement of the wheel properly. So it's, it's taken some real in-depth engineering to get a grasp of, of what's going on so we can look at it to try and improve it. Well, that's excellent. It's also, of course, a bit of unusual to have an, an off-throttle uh, understeer in a front-wheel drive car as well. So, uh, But we are going to go into qualifying now here. We'll talk a bit more to Tom as the, uh, as the race progresses. Um, I'm going to quiz him quite a few more times. So, we're going to go into qualifying here. And there is a breaking news story at the moment. Toby Davis, the most successful uh, Clio driver in the field and championship protagonist has a problem with his hardware. His pedals don't seem to be working well at all. He's in a race against time to fix those. So that is a big shame, Scott. It is. He's get, on, get on with it. And uh, get, get in here. Sorry. Uh, absolutely. Uh, well, he's got obviously less than 10 minutes now. Qualifying has now gone underway. Green light has gone. So we've got now about nine and a half minutes left for the session. So 30 seconds gone already. So it is really much, as you said, a race against time from get on onto the track. Um, quick recap for those who are unaware of how this qualifying session works, it's pretty simple. Uh, all cars get 10 minutes, they can go out whenever they like, but they get one single flying lap. And that's going to be really crucial, as, as Tom was explaining, about how it's crucial how you to get this lap ex exactly perfect at every spot, every single apex, and not make one single error. Because um, as we were talking about, guys, one single error can send you down the grid and several places, so even as close as one tenth. In practice, they were very, very close with the times in terms of the top 10 or top 13 were separated by about three tenths of a second so one error it can send you can be the difference between pole and starting halfway down the field and this is a driver who uh, has been very very quick in the early testing of this Clio hasn't he uh, Scott he's adapted very very quickly to these cars these brand new cars after showing promise in the uh, in the older cars also but uh, had a tough time the last time of getting two punches he did, but he did show some really great promise. Pedro Amaral is a definitely great upcoming driver. We're looking back at this car as we gonna look forward to heads through Cops Corner. And he did, did show put a really good, uh, good display. He was up there in the top 10. He was definitely fighting with the likes of a few guys, the likes of like Chris Hack and a couple of the THR boys. He really did put on a great performance. And it's good to see some guys who are pretty much independent on their own up there against the bigger teams like THR Precision. You can count Core as well. And there's guys in there like Eric Strana for Ice Cold as well. Ice Cold, another big team that have their presence here in this series and in THR as well and also Florian Strauss as well single-handedly but he's up there he finished fifth in the practice sessions just now so great stuff from him quick look at time not a good lap so far time. from Pedro Amaral though he's five tenths down on a 3-1 from Munro so that's not promising after we've just been bigging him up already the commentator's <laughs> curse is striking and there you see a 3-3 from Darren Adams who's usually in the top 10 that shows how difficult it is at this track to nail a perfect lap because of course it's so short you might think well that's easy to nail a perfect lap but it's actually the opposite because you've got no chance to make it up if you make a small mistake anyway and there you go 3-5 from Amaral and he was well inside the top eight uh, pretty much uh, throughout all, all, all pre-event testing and it just goes to show if you can't, you can't quite get it right on that one lap and it really does cost you lots of time and already he's down in four, fourth of the fifth drivers and Jimmy Hughes is the fastest at the moment. He's now he's now just uh, going back around on his uh, in lap, and I do love that livery that he has. The walk race livery has been updated. Uh, first of all, it was created by uh, Nicholas Cole for the 2008 car. Now updated by Robert Wiesemuller for this 2013 uh, iteration. When will Jack Keithy go out? That is a question. Do we have a, a prediction from you, uh, Scott, and who's going to take pole? And Tom? I don't know I who's think... going to uh, get in there for, for pole just yet, but what you were saying about the circuit is really interesting. You know, ultimately, there are only four corners here, but three of them lead on to quite large straights. So what might seem a, a small mistake, a missed at apex, you know, a slight, slight lock under braking, compiles itself all the way down the, the next straight. So you might see a big variation in times here. Yeah, most definitely. I do agree with that. I think, I'm not sure if Tom will agree with me here. I think probably the trickiest, trickiest car on the circuit is probably going to be turn two because as you approach it, you're effectively, you have to go into it. And there is a way you can, I'm pretty sure you can brake in a straight line, but for the most part of that corner, you have to pretty much trail brake. You have to put brake and steer at the same time. And with these Renault Clears, as Eric Strana goes top on a 1 2.6. Good lap, isn't it? Absolutely. Fantastic lap for Strana. He was one of the top guys in practice. But back to the point I was making, with these new Clears, we have their brakes. That are more rear bias, which means basically when you do stand on the brakes, the rear end is more easy to come around. 
that's a crucial corner to try and get right because if you don't get your approach right on that one and you're turning in and the rear is very light that can easily ruin the lap so turn two is, I, I think I'm not sure if Tom will agree with me as I said but that's probably the most key corner on, on the lap and of course of the race we could be seeing quite a few guys into turn one uh, in, on the first lap on, in at turn two making quite a few mistakes and that could possibly cause a bit of carnage I think you're exactly right. It's imperative to get that right. And as you say, it's a very delicate balancing act. You know, you have to get your braking right. But you can't sacrifice your exit either. You really need everything to work right in turn two. So as we watch the field go around, it's Eric Strahan, or Strahaneh, as he was telling me. Is that's how you pronounce it, Strahaneh? And uh, I thought it sounded a bit dirty, so I decided to stick with Strahan. From now on, it's come out a little bit, a little bit uh, wrong in the broadcast, I'm sure. But Chris Butcher here said he was, he was, he was struggling early on. Ha didn't, hasn't done much practice, as his, is his want, to be honest. But he has a lot of natural, you know, a lot of talent, a lot of latent talent, does Chris. So he can always draw on those reserves, and he has, of course, raced his track quite a few times before. We've used this track in season one, and we use it in season two and three as a pre-season track, as a non-championship event. So Chris goes across the line two eight eight zero, just two tenths off Eric Strana, and he will actually be pretty pleased with that considering his early pace and what he said to you Scott. Well he did, he said to me uh, when we first got these cars it's pretty much the case of I don't like these cars end off pretty much <laughs> and he's still not enjoying them he's focusing on a few more areas of his, of his sim racing and stuff so um, but I think for your face actually surprising himself he's up there second quickest that's not too, that's a pretty decent time there from, from Butchie there not too bad uh, we're watching Chris Hack at the moment one of the, one of the dark horses if you, I think you'll agree with me right he's a pretty, know, had a pretty good run especially at Croft last time out a couple of Decent uh, top 10 finishes for him. And of course, plenty of excitement here, of course, in the final few laps as well from Chris. Oh, and absolutely. Hitting, <laughs> hitting the anti cuts and two wheeling it all the way through. Oh, and it seemed to learn he did it lap after lap. That was, that, that, it, it, it probably wasn't. It wasn't so, wasn't so nice for him in the car as Chris <laughs> goes fifth on a 3.1. Well, that was a poor end of that lap, wasn't it, in the end? Because he was looking it, promising early on there. It, it was. He, he went a little bit too deep into, I think, turn three from what I saw, into Brooklyn. So that's what, what, what um, compromised him there. I can see Jesper Tolborg, who is our silent assassin, if you like, doesn't always let his driving do the talking. He's pretty much Just our resident Kimi Raikkonen. Just following through on the sectors, I think he could go P1. Oh, there he goes. There you go. He does indeed. He won for Jesper. That's a great lap. Very neat lap. I followed him through on the sectors there, and he was uh, a little quicker in sector one. Very even uh, with, with Eric Strahan in, in sector two, but just got it in, in sector three, but very tight at the front. And Jack Heath has gone second, just under the radar there. He's, I'm trying to find him on track. He's just gone second. Look at that. There's a 2.617, 630, 653. And that's how close the times are at this circuit. And Lawrenson goes to a 2.979. He goes into fifth spot. And he'll be slightly disappointed with that, but fifth spot's not too bad a place to be starting from at the moment, as we lost somebody from uh, 12, uh, 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 that's, um, sorry, that's uh, 12th spot, I think, somebody just exited from. So uh, hopefully they can just get back in before we go into warm-up, and they'll still count their time. It, who is out on track at the moment? Out on track at the moment is Simon Kilo, Florence Strauss also, and Salo. So I think Salo's the first round his outlap, isn't he? One thing I want to point out, and it's a big one, Toby Davis he's is back. in the You're server, right. but he's got just two and a half minutes to set a lap time now, so you're going to have to really uh, <laughs> scramble everything together, and it's all action stations at THR to get that car out there and get a lap done. And I'll tell you what, if he puts this thing inside the top five, that'll be a miraculous effort to get him up there. Um, watching Rasmus Salo, very talented young Finnish driver. He's been recently snapped up by THR. He was driving for Optimum Sim Racing, but they've managed to get him on board. And uh, I think they gave him one of the, his first tests out at the recent 24-hour race, which THR took part in. They gave him a run out. I think it was in their LMP1 car he was running, and did a pretty good job, in fact, even though the car did have some problems. So Salo then came across the line to start his lap. And he always seems to put surprise. I think he actually appreciate. I think he set one of the pole positions back at Thruxton. He did. Which was a brilliant lap. Brilliant lap he put in there. And uh, unfortunately, went slightly backwards down towards the fi uh, down backwards through the field uh, as a result of that through race two. That one. So that wasn't particularly good for him. But solid up the end of the first split. And he's oh, only seven thousandths down. So THR really have found some some single lap pace here because they were pretty ferocious in their race pace last time out at Croft. But and position were telling me they've tried made some steps in the setup. Particularly Keith, he has found some areas that he didn't really try in Croft, but he's managed to find him that Silverstone. But it seems, to it be seems only Keithy though, doesn't it, Scott? It seems mm -hmm. only Keithy has found that time at the moment. He has. And that's interesting because Keithy was telling me that he was a bit nervous, of course, and who can blame him? He's got quite a big championship lead and it all rests on him. So for, for Keithy, it's pretty much he's relying on his teammates to try and take as many points as he can out of mainly Davis and Talborg and all the rest of the THR guys who I'm sure will be helping out their fellow teammates in the THR Orange camp. 
And uh, but what can Salah really do, Scott? Store. Well, we'll have a look. So the line. Oh, he's not quite. Look he's at fourth. that. He's less than a tenth away, and he's fourth. He'll be bitterly disappointed well, he with was. Me, being so close. So he's actually fifth now. You're right. He and was, Davis and Toby goes Davis fifth. goes fifth. He's now sixth, and Toby Davis has matched. Salo's time, so that's a fantastic effort. And Kilo goes seventh with a two seven six three. So look at that, just over a tenth and a half covering the top seven. And poor Kilo is a tenth and a half up and back down in seventh place. We said it'd be close. We weren't kidding. Absolutely, and we did. I did say. And that's it, isn't it? Everyone said a lap time. He has, and I did say if Toby can get that car into the top five, that'll be a miraculous effort, and he's done just that in the top five, so it's fifth, so it counts. But um, he's gonna have a bit of work to do, of course. He'll be his blood is gonna be up now because he he knows he had to rush to get his pedals fixed to get it back out there, pumped in that lap time to get him fifth, and now he's probably gonna be absolutely fired up to get this race started because he, and he's gonna be definitely one to watch, of course. He's the reigning champion, and he's pretty much on form because he won race two by an absolute canter in Croft, he so did. he's gonna be. And of course, he's also on a higher course from winning the Supercar Grand Prix well recently, which we want to mention. Congratulations to Toby for earning the GP plates at the recent MSA British Supercar Grand Prix at Snetterton. Uh, and so all of this is going to really have him pumped up for this race. So I wouldn't surprise him if he seen him have a storming first couple of laps from Toby Davis. That should be definitely be the case. And as we were saying, uh, we talk about a little bit about how, you know, how rushed Toby will have been to get, you know, into the server and get everything sorted in his hardware issues. You yourself, Tom, would, would have had several occasions, you know, during your race in life where you're not even certain if you're going to make the grid. And it's all the rush to get on there. And I mean, how do you calm yourself down, you know, when that's the case, when you, you've rushed onto the grid with, say, 30 seconds to spare, and now you've got to focus on the race ahead. Is it difficult to, to then change your mentality? I have to say, I think this this is more difficult. You know, if we, with my experience, you've got a, a rather large team around you that uh, are usually having the predicament, and I've always been a fan of, of getting myself ready, so I don't need anyone to strap me into the car or anything like that. So I, <laughs> I get myself in as I normally would, whether the car is going out or not, um, and I run through my preparation, and for that exact reason, to keep you nice and consistent every time you go out to race, to be ready. And if they get the car out, they get the car out, and if they, you know, if they don't, they don't. But uh, either way, I'm always ready at the same time, ready for each race. Right, so there we have it. Uh, Tom just likes everyone else to do the work. <laughs> so let's, it's a uh, lazy way. <laughs> yeah, delegate. That's, that's, that's the kind word to use, isn't it? No, I joke. Uh, we're going to just go to a quick ad break. We'll be back in 30 seconds' time, and we'll do a rundown of the grid with Scott. GamePod, the ultimate race rig for those serious about sim racing. Puts you in the driver's seat with all the controls at your fingertips. Be number one on the road, in the race, in the game. GamePod, the choice of champions. And welcome back to live coverage of round eight of the 2013 Tom Ons Cole Clear Series, run by Touring Pro Series in association with Tom Ons Cole, Team Hard, and GamePod, amongst other sponsors. Here's the grid then for round for race one of this evening, and it's a pole position for Jesper Talborg of THR. He takes it by just I'm working it out on the screen, 13 thousandths of a second from Championship leader Jack Keithley. Row two is Eric Strana for Ice Cold and Florence Strauss. The two kind of almost kind of. Um, Wild cards, if you like, in there. Didn't really expect them to be that far up the field, but they'll be starting row two. Championship league, champ, reigning champion Toby Davis starts on row three with a last-minute effort after his pedals had a bit of a failure, and he'll start alongside Rasmus Salo on sixth. Row four, Simon Kilov and Chris Butcher. Great performance from him after some lackluster drives in the past couple of race weekends. And rounding out the top ten on row five, it's Alexander Larison and Jimmy Hughes. Row six, it's Gary Lennon and Chris Hack. Row seven, we've got Heinz Petzold and John Monroe down in 14th. He did say he wasn't enjoying his cars, hasn't had too much practice either, so he's going to be having a real challenge from row seven. Row eight is going to be Luca Peklaj and Thomas Matuszewski. And then looking down the rest of the field from 16th, if Ryan wants to scroll down. My apologies, uh, Scott, I'm thinking about part of some, uh, some of the admin while I was there. No, that's fine. Um, so on row 9, we've got Simon Shepard for Core Racing and Pipo Rodriguez for GT Competizione. On row 10, we've got Darren Adams for Core and Matt Richards for Aerostream Motorsports. And then coming near the back of the group, we've got Tom 21st, Thomas Jacobs for 6th Axis. Jay Adji down in 22nd for THR. 23rd oh. is, uh, in fact, it's Pedro Amaral, which is really surprising seeing down there after his great performances back at Croft. And then the rest of the field, it's Robert Powell for Core on 24th. Row 13. 
13, we've got Scott Servick, 25th, and Jordan Osseklund in 26th. And at the back of the field, all on his own, on 27th, on row 14, it's Davy van der Venne, the Belgian driver, for AD Racing. So, pretty close grid there. And, um, Tom, from what you've seen at the time so far, very, very close. Who do you reckon are going to be the the real dark horses or the real kind of favourites to take the victory? Do you think that Talbot's got it in him, or do you think Keith is going to be wanting to grab himself another victory to strengthen his championship charge? Uh, having seen the seen them race before, I think you know Keith is going to be wanting to take the win. Um, you know, he has got a championship to protect, but it would be nice to see him uh, still pushing forward for for the outright sport. But I think actually to to look at a dark horse, you maybe have to look a bit further down the grid. The, uh, the job that Toby Davis did there under that pressure um, and, and literally making it out in the dying minutes of the session was fantastic. And I think this track, uh, the nature of it and the uh, nature of these cars with, with slipstreaming and so on could make it possible to come from a fairly decent way back right to the front of the grid. And also, psych be. Oh, sorry, Scott. Sorry, also, <laughs> Carry also, on. Psych also psychologically, just quickly. Um, of course, Davis is back in fifth and had all that pressure he's having to deal with. He's fighting with his teammate Talborg in the championship, as we said, the gap is one point between them. So, you probably right, probably could be um, right in saying that Talborg has a psychological advantage because he sat there all cool and calm and pole position. And it's Davis that's right around to get himself all psyched up for, the, for this race after the problems he's had in qualifying. That is true. Um, you know that that is a, a possible outcome on it. But with all this psychology stuff, you know, there's always two sides. You know, Toby could be sitting there thinking that actually, do you know what he was? He was very under pressure there. He was top five um, still um, with, with those results. And uh, yet now he's had a few minutes to get himself collected ready for the race. And of course, now we're going to go head on to the formation lap for this. Um, well, it's the 15th race of the season. Many, many races this season so far. So round 15, uh, races 15 and 16 today are round eight. And that is on board now with Jesper Torborg, who has just set off on his formation lap. Um, but one thing we haven't, we're just going to touch on quickly is, of course, we see that Keithley has that big lead in the championship. But of course, there are six races to go. But he has a nice 60, 60 odd point lead, hasn't he? Um, but there, and, there, and there are 300 points still up for grabs. However, with the way the point structure is set, Tom, it's going to be very, very difficult for uh, anybody to catch Jack. Um, unless Jack has problems because of the closeness of, of the point structure. Yeah, absolutely. I think we, we were talking about this earlier. There's only a three-point difference between winning and, and, and finish, finishing second. So um, Jack is in, in, a, in a safe position. And for the, for the viewers and, uh, and for the other contestants, I think uh, for him to be pushing for, for the race win makes this uh, a lot more exciting. Whether or not he will be doing that, whether or not he, you know, he's playing the mathematical game, um, I don't know, but it, you know, it is going to be hard for him uh, what would you to do, kind Tom? of lose this. Uh, what would you do? I, I, I'm an all-out kind of guy, and uh, <laughs> I, I, I would like be that. trying to take spoils. But you know, that he's so far ahead in the championship, he's also going to be in a very good mental state now. Uh, he knows he's comfortable, um, but also he's done the job. You know, he's earned these points and he's got himself this lead. He has indeed. Uh, so predictions, boys and girls. Uh, Scott. Oh, you know what? I'm going to say a card and I say, now that his blood's up, I'm going to go with Toby. I think he possibly he could have it. He's on a, he's on a high win super that's not, race. That's not the wildest of wild cards there is around, to be honest, is there? <laughs> After well, two no, but still. Last time out. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but I think that um, I think Toby possibly, with the pace he's been showing recently, and he was pretty quick in race two and Croft, I think with the state of mind he's got at the moment, I reckon possibly he could be someone just to push through, and I think he's definitely going to cause a bit of a, uh, a ruckus on the first couple of laps, I think. Okay, and Tom? Um, I was going to go Toby as well, as well, but uh, to change it, I'm going to go with Salo. I think he did a great job in qualifying there. Oh, and that will be, Salo's won a TPS race before, of course. I'm going to go with Jesper Talborg for this. Not the most creative of ideas, <laughs> but the drivers are now set on the grid, and they're about to go racing. And away from the grid they go. It looks like a decent start there from Talborg. We see as they come down towards Cops Corner for the first time, and Talborg is definitely ahead. That's a great start from Talborg. Usually, his Achilles heel in races is his start, and he often drops back and ends up having to make positions up later in the race. But it seems like he's solved that this time around. Toby's already up to fourth. He's past Florian Strauss with Salo still sixth, seven this kilo, eighth is now Lauritsen, and look at uh, Davis trying to go down the inside of Jack, who's hit Torborg, and he's going to make that position through. However, now Jack has the slipstream down the straight. Torborg's going to come across and give the slipstream to Toby. Nice teamwork. 
That's fantastic. And look at the front of Keith's car. Absolutely stoked. That's going to hurt him aerodynamically. And that's perfect for Toby Davis. He needs a superstar. And he's got just that as they're down towards Brooklyn. Talbot trying to go across. Oh, there's contact between Keithy and Talbot. Tabor's trying to go around the outside. And Keithy might even get the lead through Luffield as the rest oh, of the team their way to the background. Ah, and this is fantastic racing from these two as they go through. And that's Strong is back to fourth. Place. Look, he's been shuffled. He's been shuffled really by Strong. He has, and Tolbox is just Strana. leading from, uh, from, uh, from Keith. Look at that, that is so, so close. And now the funny out coming down towards Cox Corner once again. We said it'd be close racing. I don't think even we expected this at the moment. Strahan having a slight look on the inside there, making sure he just makes the corner. Not a serious attempt. And now Tolbox gets a nice one out. He's going uh, to have to defend from Strahan. He's got the overlap to be close. Don't get on the grass there, because he will go steering off into the gravel at Maggots. And Toby Davis looking menacing also on the side of the going across the track. He's hit by the precision cars. It's Kilo. It's Kilo. Kilo's back down to eight. I think he's recovered it. He's not going off the track. But Sarlo, uh, that is <laughs> Tom Oso Cole's pick. So <laughs> we can see the but first Tom, Tom Oso Cole has a hit. <laughs> also, also Chris Butcher's in trouble. He's missing his front bumper. So he got caught up in, that sh in those shenanigans as well. That was an absolute carabalage down towards turn two for those guys. As they head this down towards Brooklyn again. Manic Scott. Oh, and Robert Powell's been tagged by Jaggi back in the back as well. We've got someone else, that's Jimmy Hughes, I think, has gone back in the back as well. You've got Cleo's every which way as they head through. Absolutely. But oh, and Strong says, Oi! Cut straight across the front of uh, of Strahan. Oi, young buck, that was my bit of track. And he <laughs> asserted himself there. Wow. Great racing, sir. This is now still looking at Keith E. Seckler. Strout, right, literally. Blue 360 clear right at the back bumper of the precision car, and Tabo just streaking away with it, saying, "Strap amongst yourself, boys. I'll uh, I'll take the lead and run away with it." Thank you very much. And Strash trying to get up the inside, small little nudge on the back of Keithy's car as they head through the Maggots corner, and I think Strash might have this better traction as they head onto the Wellington straight. But I think it's the third time, and now Strash looking on. What has happened to Toby Davis? He's down to sixth because Gary Lennon in the ice car racing cars got Lennon, past him. Lennon, where did he come from? He has a fantastic start. The the uh, the elder Scotsman. Now this is Strass going down the inside of. Keith, he's run it too wide, he's run a bit too deep, and Strauss is up to second place. Strauss are going to try to go with him on the outside. Oh, Small bit of contact! And Keith, he almost out of shape, but he plants the throttle and keeps the car pointing in the right direction. Great thinking there from Jackie. That's how you correct one of these front-wheel drive cars. Keep the foot flat to the floor, and that car will just bring the front straight back around. Head back onto the pit straight, and Talbot streaking away with it. He is fast as lap, as you can see. He's not been hassled at all. Just out front, in lap times, keeping that, uh, that speed up. And Davis has Lawrence on his, in, on his inside, and Lawrence has backed out of it though sensibly. And now Lennon's gone wide, and that makes Davis going to get two in one, it looks like to me. So Davis has gone from seventh coming out of the final corner, open to fifth going into turn two on the next lap. And here comes Lawrence down the inside, also of the Scotsman. So that's the Englishman, a Dana, the Scotsman, fighting out of the fifth spot. Davis had a great start. Seems to get shuffled back a little bit, and is often the case on this particular track. Having raced it several times myself, it's very, very difficult to get back into line. It's almost, almost get shuffled out NASCAR style at Bristol, as uh, Strauss is still leading just about from Keithley. And now, here comes Kilo, straight back down the inside of Lennon. He's gone so deep that he went down the inside of Lennon and hit his teammate Lauritsen. That is not going to be good. Those two are very good friends, both Danish carters. So I'm sure there'll be words in their scene speech channel right now. But fantastic racing so far, and already it's playing out for us in front of us, Tom. It's incredible. These first few laps have um, ha have been intense. I think it's very much safe to say that Jack Keithley uh, is not settling for points. When you look <laughs> at the front of his car, you can see he's very much keen for the outright win. It's going to be interesting now to see if they can settle into their positions stop scrapping and, and do something about Talborg running off into the distance. And Strauss was asking me, because we often help each other out in, in, in the Clio's because uh, we were teammates uh, a couple of seasons ago and uh, I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm not ashamed to say I've taught him quite a lot of things about racing football drive but I've certainly not taught him racing like this because he's absolutely flying at the front of the field at the moment and looks like he's going to be one of the strongest challengers oh, towards oh, Talbot. Oh, look at oh, that! Oh, he's oh, on the oh, ground! He Oh, he's good. Davis goes past him, so that is crucial. And this is what we're talking about. And it needs Keithley to be back down the pack, doesn't it? This is the races that the THR need to win while Keithley's in trouble. It is, and that was absolutely key, because look at that. Oh, what's happened there? Was that a bit of lag there, was there? Because look, Keithley's come back, straight back up the inside. And look at it, they're hammering, hammer and tongs, these two, literally going at it NASCAR style, bumping panels, touching panels, and Keithley's back up the inside of Cops, and then also they're bringing Gary Lennon back with them. So Keithley's advantage. Toby's advice 
rather I should say, didn't last very long. This piece now it's the battle over fourth place and Lennon's trying to get himself into the mix as well. Down towards Maggot's corner and Lennon gives Davis a bit of a love tap as well. Laris is getting himself into that one as well. But that contact with Keithy and Strana all caused when Strana got a better exit out of turn two. They were side by side down Wellington straight. Strana went round the outside and Keithy being the racer that he is, as Tom mentioned, he doesn't want to settle. He doesn't want to settle just for fourth place. He wants the victory. He didn't want to let that place go. And as a result, Strana forced him onto the curve and it wasn't put on purposeful. It's purely just the fact that oh he was forced because he wanted to keep the position and here comes Davis round the outside of Keithy again. They're still side by side. These two are pretty much the first and second, first and third in the championship. Davis trying to go around the outside. There's more contact. This is incredible stuff here at Silverstone in this first race. We've still got a second one to go. This is Crikey. I'm not sure I'm going to be racist on the top end. <laughs> I don't think you're going to the last Scott. You're definitely going to battle with this. <laughs> Yeah, how intense this action is at the moment and they're all weaving around looking for advantage in positions and the Lennon's gone too deep and that means he's probably going to lose two positions here that's the issue you make a slight mistake like that look at that he only missed the apex by maybe a couple of feet and then two of the position guys went straight through straight past them and now Davis is so hungry on the back of Jack Keatley tapping him <laughs> here and there Morse code on the back tap 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 hey I'm here and I'm going to come past. And who is having a great run here? It is Jimmy Hughes. Look at that. He's right behind this lead group. And Strauss at the front is also catching Jesper Torborg while Strahan has pulled away from TV. So it's the top three are in a class of their own because they're not battling. And you see how much time you lose when you are battling. Just seven laps. The gap is now four seconds from the pack behind the top three to the top three. Absolutely. I've, I've said this so many times in the simulation broadcast. The harder these guys fight each other, the easier it's going to be for the guys in front to make a break and that's exactly what they're doing. Talbot, Strauss and Strana are in a race of their own fighting over the podium place while these guys are scrapping the best of the rest. Now that's exactly where both Keithy and Davis do not want to be. They want to be out there fighting but instead of fighting the podium they're fighting with each other and look at this Davis is pretty much out on his own helpless because look at that he's got one position car in front and two behind because now Laris is trying to force away off the inside squeezing him right onto the grass. This is over fifth and here comes Laris. Oh, this and is not a good situation is it? Open the door. And Larrettson, all oh, Davis, a little sideways bite. He oh, he's got a great one, look at that, day. right behind Keithley. He might even take the position here. He's got a great slipstream, that was a great little exit. This is going to be crucial if he can make the pass down here. Up towards the Wilson Street, down towards Brooklyn. And this is exactly the position Strana put Keithley in last time when they made contact. Oh, what a dummy it's down a the inside. Back. Fantastic. There's more contact and Davis just gets through. Keithley gets the switch back and he's back into fourth place. And the two, and look behind them, Lennon, up the inside of, I think that's Keelov, yes it, yes it is, side by side, Jimmy Hughes getting involved as well, this is a brilliant race, we're only on lap 8, this is incredible. A swerving which way in every way, I don't think, I don't know, we can't keep up, we're not sure how the drivers are keeping up right now, because they're all over the track, Davis there, slithered down the inside of Jack Keatley, when I was shaking with the brakes, I don't tap from Keatley because of that, probably felt that Keatley tapped him, you know, a bit too aggressively, so he but gave why? him a tap back at the final corner, and it all kicked off, and now Davis has been passed by Lawrenson because he's made a mistake at Cops, and it looks like Lennon's going to try and slot through also, he's on the inside, it, there's no room for these guys, there's no room at all, and Davis oh! is getting far too aggressive, he needs just to calm down, because at some point, he's going to push somebody off the track, or himself off the track, and that will be championship over, because he will be penalised for doing that. Keelov and Hughes are side by side down the Wellington straight, and these guys are still at it as well. And Monroe's got himself into this fight as well. He's 11th place. Oh, that's someone off! That is. is that that's Rodriguez. Rodriguez. The wall. It is Rodriguez. Oh, the track, comes back on the track. Oh, it's Maliszewski is hitting. Oh. Is it Maliszewski or is it Adji? It's was. Adji. No, it's Maliszewski. No, it is Maliszewski, you're correct. We were correct the first time. And I think that's Amaral. Was it, it that Amaral? It was Amaral, not Rodriguez. Oh, oh, not shame. again. Poor Amaral. And it was a great Whenever something wrong goes if anything, anything goes wrong, he's right in the middle of it. Another puncher for him. That's three races in a row. Let's watch that on the replay. Not sure what Rodrigo's was playing at, why he didn't press his brakes earlier. That was pretty irresponsible drive. Let's have a look at the replay once again and see if we can decipher what happened. Look at the damage on the car. I just rewinded it for you. And so he went off down the straight. It's gone ball with him. Who's that? That's is that Monroe? That must be Munro. Yes, must be Munro. He was the, 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 less, the, the one who was furthest back. And he's on the grass on the outside. There's contact there, isn't there? Side by side. So he certainly wasn't, you know, uh, at fault for the contact in the first place. It looks like there's just not enough room. And he goes off the track. And I'm not sure if he pressed his brakes uh, soon enough here. Went straight back across the track. And there was Amaral Madzewski who cleaned him out. So, oh, it was always going to come to a, a sticky end at some point. And unfortunately, it affected the guys. 
who weren't even involved in the first place. But back to live action. We go back to the front of the field because they are very close indeed. These are the three leaders, Torborg, Strauss and Strahan. Absolutely. So Tarwog then just holding station. He's effectively, he's waving the flag for THR right now because Davis is back down in seventh. And he really is under pressure now from Simon Kilov. That's under seventh place. So the Danes really giving some... In fact, he's a little gap back to Kilov, who himself is trying to deal with Jimmy Hughes as they head down towards the Maggots corner for a second. I'm going to call it Maggots or Beckett. I'm not sure what you call that one. But, maggots, um, I think. The second bit is, yeah, uh, is it Beckett's will be Maggots. Carry on, looking, so, behind, yeah. looking behind Tarwog, though. Could be a switch for second because it's Strana going at it again. This time he's going up the inside of... Is that the outside, in fact? Outside of Florian Strauss. It was Brooklyn's. Will he make it sticky? Tried it on Keithy and Keithy came off worse. But this time Strana says, I don't... Th Strauss says, I don't think so. You want this position, you have to take it from me the hard way. And that's, I think, pretty much Strana's like challenge accepted because I think he's going to go for it any way he can. But out of Luffield then, towards the pit straight. This is the old pits, of course, because the brand new Grand Prix pits are all the way back on the straight on the exit of Stowe Court on of um, Club Corner and down the pit straight they come again. This is only lap twelve, so we're only halfway through the first race. We've had so much action to fill probably a couple of them we've had this race. But then again all the races have been fairly entertaining. But back down towards Maggots once again and Talbot has a little bit of an advantage and uh, so far Talbot's not being allowed to relax too much. So um the thing is that with Talbot also we always find that Talbot is, is good you know, at the end of races, when it gets past halfway, he comes into his own. So the fact that he's leading at halfway is a bad omen for the drivers behind. But let me just give you a quick rundown of Strauss and Strahan. Strauss, the last time he won a TPS race, remember, he's a virtual V8 Supercar champion in 2011. He's down the inside now. He's going to try and take the lead from Jesper Torborg. Looks like it's going to be make it stick as well. He does! So, Strauss goes into the lead of the race, and the last time he won a TPS race was the opening race of the 2012 V8 season. That was way back in Albert Park in 2012, I think it was April uh, of 2012. That's, that's a long, long drought for a driver who's one of the stars of the TPS in 2011. And the last time, and the only time, he's won a Clio race in the TPS has, was at Toban back in season one, round two. So that shows how uh, long ago uh, since Strauss has really tasted victory, either in the TPS or even in Clio's. And for a driver who's so highly rated, I mean, it has been a ridiculously long uh, streak for him. And Strahan himself does have a TPS win in the virtual mini challenge. And last time out at Oran Park, he ran very well indeed two podiums in those two races so he's really on a roll Torborg took a second and a win at Oran Park so these three drivers really are in scintillating form they are absolutely and these guys really scrapping amongst themselves and um, obviously let's, let's get Tom sort this one Tom of course Torborg's now been shuffled into the middle of these two do you think he's feeling any pressure at the moment because of course he's he's the highest up of the two THR guys that are battling over the championship so he's now got Strana right into that bumper Strauss has just passed him, so do you think he's really feeling, he's kind of maybe feeling a little bit of unease of his, he's usually quite a cool driver, do you think he's now feeling the pressure right now? Um, I think you would be, with uh, with the team and championship situation put to one side, in this position where he is now, he wants to keep his eye on the lead, you know, he put the effort in in qualifying, he got on pole, he led um, for, I think, just just over half the race. Oh, oh he's getting well, the oh, no. oh, he's gone sideways, oh, I thought he was off. Sorry to cut across you there, Tom. But I thought well, I think that, that was going to be the question. <laughs> did answer your yes, question. Yes, the answer. <laughs> we didn't need the, the, the answer because there he hits that curb. And we were talking about it, weren't we, earlier? The entry to that corner is so difficult because it's so narrow. And um, it's a good job that Strong was turning the right direction because he almost got spun around by Torborg also. And that's lost him two seconds. Back to live action. That's lost him two seconds. And it seems like it's up to the Struz. The Struz, the Strands and the Strauss to fight out for this win and that will be a momentous occasion in the Clio's for sure if either of these two win. I think we're interesting looking fourth place Alexander Larrison ahead of Jack Keith you, know, you would have thought that should be the other way around and it was. So it was Larrison. yeah I, I was thinking they were just pushing each other along but it seems <laughs> like they're battling because Lennon's not too far away now all of a sudden not just one second away look. And Toby's not even making the Indian race too much on that either because he's only back in seventh and he has got Jimmy Hughes just slightly starting to creep up on him as well so they've been starting to feel it now. So THR are not exactly the best position they'd like to be at the moment. Points wise, out of the three championship contenders at the moment, the best place is in fact Talbor. He's up there in third place. But he actually really has to pull on the way from these two. Uh, pretty much drafting each other, tandem drafting like you would in front of NASCAR. But of course, that's the only time they work together because of course the other times these guys are pretty much 
at total war with each other as they head to, through Brooklands and then Luffield and Strata keeping Strauss honest as they head on the exit and see how much exit curve they use. Strata taking a wider line so he's trying to carry more speed as he gets the draft through Woodcoat and down towards the start and finish straight. So these two, there's no championship battle, it's purely for the race victory. 50 points apiece for a victory, 47 for a victory for second place and it's a three points as we talked about that can make the ultimate difference in the championship. These two aren't going for it but they'll take any points they can regardless of who, it's, who it'll, it benefits or doesn't in the championship. Well, of course, these two guys will be going all out, won't they, Tom? Because they're not in a championship fight. And uh, if second place means nothing to these guys. It's all about the win. This is all about the glory of winning. And I think you can see that on, on the track. What they have got to be careful of is that, uh, that Talbot doesn't actually start to creep up to them. We've seen how quickly the gaps can open up once, uh, once cars start battling. So I think, um, you know, if I was out there on track at the moment, I'd want to keep this fairly safe. Not like that. <laughs> <laughs> As we've seen a uh, change whatever, in the lead. Whatever Tom says. And contact. <laughs> they do contact as well. There's a slight bit of contact. That wasn't quite friendly actually for uh, for Clears, wasn't it? That was a, that a was low very how do you good. do rather um, than But you can get see out of my though way. there, running side by side, you're compromising each other's time. And we should see now Talbot go from 2.8 down to something a little closer. Um, he only needs this, and it looks like it's going to happen again at turn one. Not uh, a good place to go side by quite. side. Not quite. So at two tenths, he's gained there, back 2.6. Um, so what, he needs another 13 of those and here. Oh, and Strauss from wide, look. Strauss got the run. He won't, he won't quite have the overlap on the inside to go through here. We've still already seen what Torbog has done when he's been on the inside of that corner. Strauss gives him plenty of room to his credit, but that will be slowing up another couple of tenths, just like Tom has been saying. And look for Torbog to close the gap as they come down to the next split, which is just before the next corner. Uh, Keithy and Lawrence are still, side, uh, still on, together on track, but Lawrence looks like he's got a bit more pace. As he has looked like he has more pace than Keithy for the past few rounds, quite frankly. And Strauss and Strauss still very, very close. In fact, they pulled away that time uh, away from, uh, from Torborg because uh, Torborg's obviously just not got, quite got the raw pace. These two are absolutely flying at the moment. And what's also going to be key is we're talking, is, uh, or just spotted in the court and wire on the uh, broadcast there, we've got lap traffic in front. So if these guys catch up to them at the rate which they are, they probably will do in the next couple of laps. That's going to be a really key factor in deciding who takes, this, who takes the race victory and who comes second. They head through Cops once again, and Strauss just holding on to that advantage as they head up towards uh, the Maggots corner once again. Let's see if Strana makes another attack. Looks to the inside just to give something to think about his wing mirrors, but... Strauss holding on a slight drift as they go through Maggots and back onto the Wellington straight. And once again, Strauss will just sit there. He'll just try and grab the draft. And he might try to go to the outside again to try and put more pressure on Strauss as they make their way down towards it. Talbot's dropped back to its another gap is 2.7. Looking down the bottom, see some more times there. See Simon Kielov and Scott Sobek at the back in ninth and 10th. He'll see a switch for 11th between John Monroe and Chris Hack. But still, oh. this battle really goes on. And Strauss gives, gives Strauss a really hard biff in the rear there, in the rear bumper. And heading on to the pitch once again. So really, Strana is giving Strauss the big hurry up as they head down back onto the and pitch. And we right. talked about, if anybody watched the Oran Park broadcast, will remember Strahan trying to get past Adrian Holm. And he was 1.5 seconds faster than Adrian. Admittedly, admittedly at a track where it's difficult to overtake. And, you know, it had a, we had much fresher tyres. It was going much, more, much quicker. And he had a 1.5 seconds lap faster car. And he couldn't get past. And it was very... It was, Found it very difficult to overtake, but here he might get the deal done because he's on the inside, and that's where you want to be. On the outside, is definitely not where you want to be. And Strahan, he's taking the lead of the race. Now, can he pull away from the hard charging German? There are four laps to go. Well, four and a half laps to go. And that is Ockerklin just there in the foreground. He's really 23rd, who is lap traffic. And Strauss is going to dive back down the inside here. Strahan cuts him off, make sure there's no gap there. And now Strahan will be able to get on with his line and perhaps pull away. He has been the, probably the fastest driver throughout uh, pre-event testing. So it couldn't, shouldn't come as a surprise too much that Strahan is quick here. But of course, we still expected THR and Precision to dominate because no driver apart from a THR or Precision driver has taken a win this season. In fact, we've rarely find, found non-THR or Precision drivers even on the podium, Scott. So this is a very refreshing change. It is, and it's Sweden versus Germany. This is an absolutely fantastic battle between these two guys. Another major battle of Europe as they head down towards the Maggots corner once again. And Stry just holding his line. Big lock up as they head onto the apex. And what kind of run has he got off the Wellington straight? Well, it's a good one, but 
Strauss has just stayed in with the slipstream and he'll start to close as he does just in that pocket of air which is um, Strauss punching the hole through the air and Strauss will benefit from that of course in the slipstream would he try and make a dive into Brooklyn? thought about it, looked to the inside but he's going to take the slightly wider line to get the better exit and you see there Strauss every time he goes to the inside it compromises his line and his exit through the corner just right there through left field corner just a little bit wide but just about got it stopped back on the apex to defend that position we're now going to head on to lap 21 so we're into the final three laps and these guys are really, uh, as we said so now it's a race of two as Talbot has dropped back to three and a half seconds Larrick is back a further 2.2 so really it's all the case of just it's, it's, it's just it's pretty much first second and third is decided. We know who's going to be on the podium. Just what order we're still trying to make up. And what's interesting enough, Larrison hasn't let Keithy back through. If he, whether he not he intends to, we'll have to wait and see. As we see the very damaged clear there of lap to Pedro Amaral as he continues on. And there is Jesper Talborg carrying on, being followed by Larrison and Keithy. So I wonder possibly here if Larrison will give way to tap to Keithy. Or whether it's a case of, yes, he's the championship leader, but if you want the place, you're going to have to do it the proper way. I'm not going to give it to you too easy. Plenty of dings and scrapes on Larris's car, it has to be said. So and he's definitely been Keith in the thick is. of the battle. And Keith's car is obviously very damaged as well um, in several places. So plenty of bent panels on these cars. And we saw exactly why that was earlier in the race. Lennon's having a great run here. He's in sixth spot right now. I wonder if Toby's still having, you know... Uh, uh, consistency issues with those pedals because he's not moved forward at all and one would expect him to do so one would not expect him to be 9.5 seconds off the pace but Kilo knows he's in a battle right now he's in a battle with Jimmy Hughes and the hard charging Scott Servick who went through his 100th TPS race at uh, Croft last time out a, a great feat in fact he's the 8th most experienced driver here which is a bit worrying for some of the drivers around I'm pretty sure but Scott Servick is uh, a Norwegian with Scottish heritage and uh, his uh, accent is, is a bit of a, an amalgam of sorts, it has to be said. But uh, he's done a, oh, he's now done 102 races, of course, in the, uh, in the TPS. His 100th race was not ha not happy at all. He crashed on the first lap. He's still running that livery to celebrate the fact he's done a century of TPS races. And he's running very well indeed, right inside that top 10. What I want to talk about uh, quickly earlier was, you know, we saw Amaral obviously involved in that incident. You know, he qualified way, way down the grid. 23rd, I think he, he was. He did. Won this. And he was up to like 12th, 13th spot. So he's having a fantastic run. And then suddenly an errant uh, compatriot, Pipo Rodriguez, just ended up taking him out. Yeah, that was the case. I remember I was talking... I was actually going to try and make that point, but unfortunately we got caught up in all the rest we of the did. action. But we did. But as I made that point, he started back in the other back of the field 22nd. He's had a fantastic charge of about 10 places. It's a real shame that Pedro seems to make fantastic starts and get himself right in the thick of the action. And it's because of getting the thick of the action that costs him big time. So hopefully race will have a better run. But we have started the final lap. And I believe the last time I saw the gap, it was half a second between Strana and Strauss. But it's closer than that. You can see it onto the back straight for the final time they go. Then they've managed to get around Ossicliff pretty easily. And I wonder if getting around them, that allows Strauss to close in that gap of half a second a bit more. So down the back straight for the final time. Is he going to make a last death? Last chance move down. Well, he's got to try. It's sort of got to try. No, I think he's too I close. Like unless he's, oh. he's getting a better exit and up towards up for the final time. And I think, unless there's some drama in this final corner in the final few moments, I think this is going to be Strana's fantastic drive. It'll be the first non-THR precision victor. It's an, a fantastic drive from the Swede. Fantastic stuff from Eric Strahan then. He had to battle his way through the group early on, tacked onto the, onto the back of the leaders, and he takes his second Touring Pro Series win, his first ever in the Clio Series. Fantastic effort from him and Florian Strauss, taking it to the most successful TPS driver of all time, Jesper Talborg also, who also has plenty of wins in these Clios. With Talborg finishing the third, some four seconds off the pace in the end, he really dropped off. He just didn't have the pace in the middle of the race. That's very unusual for someone uh, such as himself, his style is to come strong in the second part of the race. Look there, Larson well, did not let Keithy go past. So Keithy finished fifth. I'm not. I'm sure he won't be too disappointed about that. He only gives up four points to uh, to Torbor, and of course he gains four on Toby Davis, who finishes seventh with Lennon in between those two. Kilo in eighth with Hughes ninth and Hack a battling tenth. Excellent result there for Serbik. He's eleventh. Hack just snuck by on that final lap with Monroe in 12th, Ajit Shepard and Jacobs. Jacobs has been sneaking up in the championship order. It has to be said, uh, has to be said also, he's been very solid throughout the season. Easily the best of the sixth axis drivers so far. We've not seen too much of him, in fact, in this broadcast. We'll try and catch up with him a bit later if we can. But Luca Pekalak, a good run for him as well, 16th spot. 
with Salo recovered to 17th after that opening lap, uh, I think it was second lap spin, in fact, actually, which uh, was Tom's fault. Uh, 18th spot is Robert Powell, <laughs> 19th spot is Matt Richard, <coughs> and rounded out the top 20 was Davy Van de Venner. So, a scintillating first half of the race there, Tom, and then the second half of the race was much more calm, but quality driving from both Strahan and Strauss. I think very much they kind of made it through the melee, um, uh, survived the start and then uh, maximised it on, uh, at the end there. Um, I can't wait for the start of the next race. I think, um, you know, having seen that, the guys have now got uh, a little bit of experience. They're definitely going to be warmed up, ready to uh, kind of make up for, uh, for some of the mistakes that happened there in race one. And there'll be a few grudges out there as well, no doubt. Uh, after racing like that, I'm sure there, I'm sure there will be. Uh, there'll probably be a few conversations happening uh, in the background right now, and uh, you never know. We might see something settled uh, on track in in race two. But let's, you know, let's hope it's clean and and, and great racing. Ah, nobody, nobody genuinely hopes it's clean. Everyone wants to see BCCC <laughs> off track. No, I'm trying to be politically correct. <laughs> that, that's what made BCCC great. No one expects <laughs> clean race of BCCC. <laughs> yeah, no, that's very true. We're in the show business, though. It's, uh, it's slightly <laughs> different. Hey, we're in the show business as well. We're here to entertain. Hey, we are not messing about. Anyway. So, we now got to go. <laughs> we still have another half of this event to go, by the way. So, if, you, if you're already knackered, go and grab a brew. Come back. And we'll walk you through qualifying two and race two. Back in a few minutes. GamePod, the ultimate race rig for those serious about sim racing, puts you in the driver's seat with all the controls at your fingertips. Be number one on the road, in the race, in the game. GamePod, the choice of champions.
Hello and welcome back. A much needed break for, I'm sure, the drivers and the viewers and also those poor commentators for uh, after that race. So we're about to go into qualifying two here. Just to recap, if you just come in or you just switched it on or you missed the end of that first race, Eric Strahan has taken his first Clio series win in the TPS. His second place, Florian Strauss, so close to his first TPS win since uh, early 2012. Yes, Torborg finished third, while the protagonists of the championship also, Keith Lee finished fifth, and Davis in seventh, who has had some hardware problems, may contributing to perhaps towards that lacklustre by his standards performance. We saw amazing racing in the first half of that race if you missed it make sure you go to our youtube channel youtube.com slash touring pro series and also not only subscribe but make sure you watch this back um, this broadcast will be available around about a couple of hours after um, we've uh, finished broadcasting live here on youtube so you can watch that at your leisure whenever you like so we're gonna go to qualifying two here it's already underway and um, we're going to quick go straight into it for you guys. As you can see, there are ni uh, eight, just under nine minutes remaining. And let's see who's out on track at the moment. Out on track is Alexander Lawrence is just about to go out. Jack Keithley, Sam and Kilo. Jimmy Hughes on track at the moment on a hot lap. So let's go on board with him. We're actually just quickly talking around the track here, Tom. Uh, yeah, indeed. So we're coming into uh, turn two and three, as I will uh, know it here. And you can see it's a little out of shape. It's quite a difficult turn to, uh, to nail because the braking isn't... Uh, quite straight there, but the exit is all important. This is a long drag now down underneath the bridge. You're gently moving the car over to the right hand side, and your top speed is, is imperative. Uh, in the race, you'll see a lot of the overtaking happening here, but for, for now on the qualifying lap, it's important to get to that apex. Not quite, not quite as tidy as he would have liked that, I'm sure. Um, and then into the final corner here where again it's a, it's a double apex and it's all about being tidy and smooth and focusing on the exit because again it leads on to another long drag to the start line. Uh, I'd be surprised to see him run across the track, he's probably going to keep it slightly tight just to shorten that distance to the line and there he goes P2. That's a decent lap there from Jimmy Hughes but Toby Davis has gone out very early here, has shot the bolt early and has not set a, a decent lap time compared to his previous lap time which is a 2.7 wasn't it in, in first qualifying and he ended up qualifying in fifth spot so he's three tenths down on that so we could see him way down the track. Amaral again hasn't produced the pace that he's shown in, uh, in pre-event testing in Super Bowl and of course that means, you know, we could get involved in all kinds of things. The further you are down the grid, of uh, Tom, you know, and Scott, you know, the more likely you are to be involved in something, you know, that's completely not of your doing. But it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's your responsibility to be further up the grid to lessen those chances. I think you're right. As soon as you get into that mid-pack, um, you know, the... the, the... Uh, the chances of something going wrong are kind of taken out of your hands. Um, you know, at the front, you might be dicing with one or one or two cars at a time, but it's uh, you're all generally running a, a, a very, very similar pace as we saw in the last qualifying session. But in the middle, the gaps start to open up, up a little, and you get some people on a charge coming through from the back as well. So the the pace can vary, and you know the uh, people's opportunities and chances vary as well, and it can really um, sort of spice it up from our perspective, but ruin it from from some of the drivers. Absolutely, and also one thing I want to point out is that Toby, with, with Toby Davis' lap, we've seen it so many times he do, does this in the qualifying sessions, he's always one of the very first to go out early and set that benchmark time, and this time it really hasn't worked for him. I think possibly, as you mentioned there, Ron, I think possibly you are right, he may be suffering one or two problems still with those pedals, which caused him to have that last, that last lap dash, last minute dash to pull to get his qualifying time in for race one so he's had more time but of course the break bet the break between race one and race two qualifying for race two it's not very long so of course he won't have had very uh, enough time to get anything sorted so a bit disappointing from Davis we haven't seen the big guns just yet set any times so I can see we've got uh, Jack Keithy is out on track as is as Alexander Larrison uh, Chris Butch is out on track and Gary Lennon so we've got some bigger names coming out to set their times now we're getting to about halfway through the session so we're seeing Eric Strana where can he plant it on the grid and he goes pole one minute two 2.762, great stuff from Eric Strana, our race one winner. Straight to the top of the times, that's pretty much, as we said, about a quarter of a second quicker than Davis's effort. Not surprising, really, considering uh, Davis's lap time, and Strana was way up the grid, of course, if you remember. Manizewski's down on track at the moment, he's not going particularly quickly right now, he's not going to be in that uh, hunt for pole position, no doubt about that, but Chris Butcher qualified well, but uh, didn't have a good race at all. 
And uh, that's often one of the cases you get also as well. You know, you, if, if you don't practice enough for races, you might qualify okay, but then the consistency isn't there in the race and the practice at the track and the familiarity and then the changes when you're with other cars around you, and it leads to mistakes more often than not, whether they're necessarily your own or somebody else's. And it's not a good lap here from Chris either. Already down in that first sector, looked like he understeered wide out of Cops Corner and then hit the kerb, which is a big, big no-no in these cars uh, heading into Maggots. So that's not done well for him at all. Sixth, Gary Lennon, he's back behind Scott Server there. People are going to be into fourth spot, but still, only one driver in the twos at the moment. Chris Butcher's not going to go anywhere near pole with that lap uh, either. Jack Keithy, although, is just a quarter of a hundredth uh, down on Eric Strahan in that first sector. We saw that Toby Davis was very quick to that first sector. Uh, Strahan himself was six uh, hundredths down. So Interestingly, looking at the split times, Toby Davis's lap was actually uh, the quickest sector one and quickest sector three that we've seen so far in the session. It was just sector two that let him down, which was the uh, maggots and beckets onto the back straight. And we talked about it, didn't we, Scott? Uh, uh, Tom, even sorry, about how crucial that corner is, and it's just borne out right there. Massive illustration. Exactly that, but it's interesting to see, and he'll have to take some satisfaction that he has got the pace over the lap. But of course, he won't take satisfaction if he's way down in 10th, 12th on the grid. And as Lauritsen goes pole, so Lauritsen has gone pole. Over the course of the last three rounds, I would say Lauritsen is probably the quickest driver in the Clios at the moment over the course, uh, uh, if you take the spread of the last uh, two, three, maybe four rounds from Poznan onwards and uh, every race he's uh, competed in he's done very well indeed Munro's out on track also the young Scotsman commentates also for uh, Touring Pro Series as well done that in the Virtual V8 Supercars and in the Virtual Mini Challenge and uh, he's a new driver to Precision Motorsports halfway through this season but not settled into these cars well at the moment he's down in 12th with plenty more drivers to go ahead of him yet so let's go and see who has yet to set a lap time Kilo, Jacobs Bull and Bogus Matt for Richards third. So Talborg, Talborg in third. So it seems the lap times are not as quick in this second session, which is often what we see in the second uh, qualifying, because drivers have uh, got used to their cars you know, being, being slow with their, their, uh, their, their poor tyre wear and uh, poor tyre grip. Uh, Strauss has not set a lap time yet either. There he is uh, in the middle of the pit lane. Not quite sure, quite sure what he's doing. Maybe he's just watching somebody else and uh, going on board with their lap times. Let's track along with Thomas Jacob. We just said we hadn't talked about him too much, so let's, uh, let's talk about him. He's coming out, coming through his, uh, his outlap now. Some differences in their outlap. Some people just go hell for leather on their outlap and that uh, gets heat into the tyres. Other people like to just uh, gently go around the track and keep their tyres cool. And other drivers like to do both, gently around the track and weave around also. So uh, we see plenty of different techniques for that. Um, how does it go in the Volkswagen Passat, uh, Tom? Do you, do you like to warm them up a, a lot beforehand or do you try to keep them as cool as possible? Uh, we do, but again, as I said before, we have people to do stuff for us, which is very nice. <laughs> so we, we, we will go out and we'll get the front tyres quite hot because they're the driving wheels. They're doing all the turning also. They're very easy to get temperature into. Uh, what isn't so easy is the rear of the car. Um, so you might see at the start of the race the rear of the car quite loose, but what we do to combat that is go out and get our... Uh, front hot. We pit very quickly and they then switch those to the back. So by the time we actually hit the track for a fast lap, we have equal tyre temperatures through the front and rear of the car. Ah, that's a sneaky, sneaky tactic, but uh, that uh, sounds excellent logic to me. As Salo, again, is qualifying well here. Uh, will Tom, if he qualifies well, pip him, pip, um, tip him for the win again? I'm not sure he will. I'm not sure Rasmus wants him to. <laughs> Rasmus <laughs> comes out of the final corner and he is very close to getting pole position here. Just one hundredth of a second away from Lauritsen right now. Sala pushes towards the line, hasn't cut across the track. He does get oh! pole position though. Good job. Two, six, one, three, a great final sector there from Rasmus Salo. And this could be his second pole position of the season. That was a fantastic lap, and I've always said this in the qualifying session for the second race, you always get a surprise pole sitter, and this time it's no exception. Fantastic effort from Rasmus Sala, and that really shows how much he's come on since he joined THR course, he joined from Optimus Sim Racing. I mean, always the case, when you join the bigger teams, you always seem to learn quite a lot from more experienced drivers and the guys who, of course, are the, the bigger teams seem to get a lot, the most out of them. Uh, Strauss, meanwhile, his lap, he's dropped by a tenth and a half, so he's actually off Rasmus Sala's pace right now, and actually he had a pretty, pretty... Kind of scruffy, yeah, scruffy run through Brooklyn, so it wasn't the cleanest, and it wasn't the tightest, tidiest run either. So he's now going to sprint to the line. So it's not going to be pole unless it's a 
didn't look like it was a fantastic run in the final sector, so he'll come towards the line. Where will this end him up on the grid? Answer to that question is seven. So not as good as it was last time for Florian Strauss, but he is up there in the top ten, and uh, he, he's got a bit of a task to try and repeat his second place and be in contention for a victory in race two. Clock has now run down, so we now have a grid for the second race. Do and congratulations to Rasmus Sala. That is his second uh, pole position of the season, and I think, if my memory serves me correctly, it's his third pole position of his TPS career. His other pole position came. I'm pretty sure he got one at uh, at uh, I can check in the Virtual Touring Masters in season two. If you could, uh, uh, Scott, that'd be great. Yes, uh, I'll Virtual Touring Masters yeah. season two. I'm, I'm sure he got at least one pole there at Salzburg Ring uh, in the Holden Commodore for that event. But uh, Anyway, no matter how many pole positions he has, he has one here today. Congratulations to him. That will please T the THR bosses also. And a, 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 um, what's the word? It's the correct decision from them. That's vindicated. There we go. They've vindicated their decision uh, to sign Rasmus Sala. Second on the grid is Alexander Lauritsen. He showed good pace in that race, in fact, actually. Kept pace with the leaders once he got out of that that scrabble of a pack. So maybe, um, if he's not in that scrabble of the pack, he can win this race. It's not too far, uh, too far fetched to think of that. Of course, he has three victories this season in these Clios. Uh, Strahan is in third spot, race one winner. Fourth place is Jesper Talbo. He's the leader of the Virtual V Supercars Championship at the moment, and he came uh, third in the first race here. Fifth spot, championship leader, Jack Keithley. He's in and around that area. He has Lawrence not too far ahead of him, and Kilo just about uh, protecting uh, the back as well as a rear gunner. So a decent spot there for Keithley, right behind Torborg, and still three positions ahead of Toby Davis. We'll talk about Kilo in there in sixth spot, while Strauss is in seventh. And he'll be a little bit disappointed with that, considering he qualified fourth in the first race, but he recovered okay, and seventh spot is not too bad. Davis will consider himself a little bit fortunate, I believe, to be in eight spots with a 3-0 because he was in uh, uh, the top seven last time around were to a 2-7 from Kilo. So it shows the differences between the two sessions here. Ninth and tenth is Jimmy Hughes and Pipa Rodriguez. Pipa involved in that big crash that we you know thought was inevitable eventually from that, uh, those, that big, big battle pack early in the first race. Eleventh spot. Jonathan Augerklint, he'll be very, very pleased with that. He will be buzzing in Team Speak right now for Optimum Sim Race, 11th spot. That's one of his best, that's probably his best qualifying of the season, I would say, and uh, close to being his best of his TPS career. He did qualify once in fifth spot for the Virtual Mini Challenge at Brasilia in season one of that. So uh, Augerklint uh, with a fantastic qualifying result for him there. 12th spot, Chris Hack, round about the area he would kind of expect to be. 13th, Scott Servant, continuing that excellent, uh, that excellent pace that he's got. He qualified 25th in the first race and finished 11th. We didn't mention that before, but that's where, you know, he did very well indeed. Picked up 14 positions, so he's got a strong, strong race pace. 14th, Gary Lennon, again, not quite doing it in Super Bowl, but has the pace in the race. Munro and Adams in 15th and 16th, with Richards for Aerosmith Motorsport in 17th, and Amaral in 18th. That's slightly better for Amaral this time around, but not exactly where he wants to be. 19th spot is Petzl with 20th, Thomas Jacobs. 21st is Jay Agi. 22nd is Luca Peklak with 23rd, Van de Venne, who was on the back of the grid uh, last time around, so he'll be pleased not to be back there this time around. With 24th, Robert Powell. 25th, Manizewski, he'll be very disappointed with that. 26th, also Chris Butcher. That's a very, very unusual 13th row, two THR cars, with 27th Simon Shepard rounding out the runners today. So, an intriguing and a very interesting qualifying session there. And over to Tom first for prediction for this race win, Tom. I'm not sure I want to now after <laughs> the, the, the curse I placed last time. I, I'd just like to say I'm going to go with the same again, but I'm not going to mention any names. The same again? We don't know who he the is. The pole sitter. The pole, pole sitter. sitter. Don't yeah, mention after, his name. After, um, after putting my bet that way in, in, in race one and it not coming true after the job he's done in qualifying, it would be rude not to, really. And uh, we, 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 this happened last time out at, uh, in the V8s, actually, at you Oran know, Park. Myself and Danny Asbury were talking, uh, praising to the, to the high, high roots Lars Brueggemann, who's a young um, Dutch driver in the series and he was doing very very well higher than he's ever been in the V8s and uh, ended up spinning out so we, we didn't mention his name in the second <laughs> race and he did really well so you know that should that should, uh, that, should that hopefully will, will repeat itself here and Salo can uh, run at the front. Scott what do you think? 
Um, this time I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to go the other TH orange car. I'm going to go Tolborg on this one. I think possibly if you, if you can find some more pace and keep clear of some of the trouble, because I think maybe he might have, in his eagerness to get away from the cars behind, he might have burnt his tyres up a little bit too much, possibly. That's the reason why he fell back a little more, and the fact he was battling so much with the likes of Strana and Strauss. So I think possibly if he keeps it clean and looks after his tyres a little bit more, and he's not too aggressive uh, uh, as he was a couple of times in that race trying to defend. I think he might come away with a, with a victory here today. I think Saar's got a good chance, but I think possibly uh, Talborg might just take this one from... I forget where he is on the grid, but he um, should, should have to do a pretty good job, I think. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Talborg on this one. He's fourth on the grid. I'm going to go with Strana once again. Uh, he's third of the grid this time around, which is bet I think he's better than he was last time around. I think he was fifth last time around, if I remember correctly. And he still won the race last time. So I'm going to go with Strahan for another race win. Double race win would be huge, huge for both Ice Cold Racing and Strahan himself. He's just a, 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 young, a young driver from Sweden. Uh, team, uh, very good friends with Eric Tveit, who's a young driver from Norway. So, you know, they get on very, very well indeed. And it's a close-knit uh, Scandinavian community in the TPS, along with lots of other uh, uh, nationalities involved as well. The drivers are just going around on their, uh, their warm-up lap at the moment. And let's uh, go to the front of the field. And this is Rasmus Salo looking back from the new THR recruit. It's taken over the THR green mantle. Not scoring points because uh, through TPS rules you cannot score points for more than one team in a season once you've competed uh, for that team. So he's just out there in the THR colours as it were as part of the THR brand. But he has taken over the THR green car of uh, that was, was run by Wiesenmuller and Ben Davis and uh, through various reasons both of those drivers are now no longer in the championship. Just while they're on the warm-up lap quickly at the next event coming up in the Touring Pro Series. Oh, that's the wrong uh, button. <laughs> the next event coming up <laughs> in the Touring Pro Series <laughs> is at Sandown. And that's going to be the next round of the Virtual V8 Supercar. 27th of July, a week on Saturday. Make sure not to miss that. It's a 200 kilometer race on sprint tyres, so two pit stops we'll see as well. And that should be a cracking, cracking race. Also really, really looking forward to that one. Sandown is a fantastic track. And myself and Danny Asbury will be in the commentary booth for that one. We've been watching along with that, Tom. Catch a bit of that. I do like a bit of the uh, of the V8s and rear wheel drive and uh, and the power that they have. They always make it very interesting. I think the pit stop spices things up nicely. So yeah, I'll, I'll be tuning in. Excellent stuff. So there you go. It's good enough for Tom as a call. It's good enough for you lot. So make sure you tune in as well. <laughs> no <laughs> if you do miss out. <laughs> if you do miss out, of course, you can catch up on our YouTube channel. So uh, there's no pressure to be there at the time. Just make sure you watch it on YouTube and click the like button as well and pass the word around. Otherwise, I'll be chasing you with my stick. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> the driver the driver's now gridded up. Salo, there he is on pole position. Just the drivers in the background. That's, uh, the driver's not disappearing off the track. That's just a little bit of lag as the server tries to deal. And that's how the game processes so many cars on track. There's 28 we're looking at. That Going to that view means that drivers are now gridded up. There are the lights in front of us. The lights are on. They're on for a long time and they're out. And away from the grid goes Salo. It looked like a decent start from him. In fact, he jumped almost instantly. He comes across, but Larison has made an even better start. Larison on the inside. No, Salo chops him off. Salo number 92 into the lead of the race. Larison now second. Strahan in third. Keith in fourth. Tolborg has dropped to position to Keithley. So Tolborg has not had a decent start to this race. Looking back now, we'll look back from Jack Keith in there. He's yes, Tolborg behind him. And behind him is the other. Go spinner. We've got a, who, who's the spinner? Yeah, two spinner. I think a possible one that might have been Ossipin for Portia. I did see, I think Ossipin oh. position car. Oh, it's Munro. So Ossipin for Munro. They're both spun up at turn two. So they must have come together because they were together on the track, uh, on, the, on the grid also. So Ogden's excellent qualifying result has come of naught today. So that's a big, big shame for him. But at the front of the field, much calmer opening lap than we saw in the first race. This is Jack Heathrow on forward, looking back at his two championship rivals, and that's where he likes to see them, in his mirror. Just looking back, you can see just at the back, you can see Tommy Keelan and Peter Rodriguez giving it the big hip and shoulder with each other. Looking back for Toby Davis, and here they are in back, and there's Strauss still in the background, he's just finished second on the podium in race one. Look at that, he's now fighting out the bottom of the top ten with the likes of... Simon Kilov and also Chris Hatchett behind him. Now looking back to Simon Kilov there, Strauss looking to the outside when he had the inside run down towards turn two. Kilov getting very defensive on the inside. And now looking back, this is from Chris Hackett. We look at Jimmy Hughes. That's got Sobek up the inside of 
that in the back, Gary Leonard. Yes, he makes it through. So the gold option sim racing car is into 12th place. They hit down the Wellington straight for the second time on 23. And they're all Lawson leads though, he's got again. past Salo, so Lauritsen just off screen has taken the lead of the race. Will we see Lauritsen disappear now? We've seen how strong he's been at Poznan, at Most, at Croft as well, uh, apart from the first race where he didn't get to start because of technical difficulties. So, I mean, he's going to look very, he's going to be very, very strong here, Scott. He is, and also just notice in the background, Toby Davis has just relieved Jesper Talborg of fifth place. That is Toby into the top five after he started round about seventh or eighth on the grid. So he's now really starting to make a charge up in this second lap. Onto lap three, seeing the pits on the left, that's Jonathan Osterklint's red Optimus Sim Racing clear after his damage. He really has had a Shame nightmare start to the second race. Yeah, after that 11th place, that's a real, real cruel blow to his luck today at Silverstone. But up towards Maggots once again for the third time, and Larrison defending the line now ahead of the... THR Green Machine of the Finn Rasmus Sala, the flying Finn, if you like, after joining THR recently. Strana sits third, then we've got Keith Lee, Davis, Tolbo, Pipe Rodriguez up in seventh place. Brilliant start from him after a great qualifying. Then Strauss, Kilov, and Hack up there rounding out the top ten. And look at the defensive moves here. That is that Strana defending from Keith Lee going one way, then the other. And look at Davis trying to go around the outside. Will they go three wide through Brooklyn's corner? No, they won't. Davis switches back and tries to go around the outside of Keith Lee. Will they make it? Slight bit of door rubbing. He thought about turning in there, didn't he, Scott? But then he thought he better thought about it. it. He did think about it, but Keithley holds on for the moment. But looks like Davis must be, maybe the problems he had was fixing themselves, because he really is right on it at the moment. And giving Keithley his main championship rather than Pellets, Larrys has set the fastest lap of the race at 1 minute 2.7. And that's good enough for a really good qualifying time to get himself up to the first couple of rows. So, brilliant pace from Larrys. Already has a four tenth of a second gap already as we start that four. All nice and calm, actually, the front of the race. Not the uh, the manic session we had at the start of the second race, but there's time for that to change, no doubt about that. But it's a, a welcome relief that everyone just nice and calm down and close instead of bashing each other off the track and around the different lines. As Rodriguez, he's right at the back of Tolbo right now. So this is the strongest run of Rodriguez of the season so far, it has to be said. And he looked like he was looking strong in that second, in that, in that first race as he was fighting his way through. But obviously he had that coming together with Monroe. We couldn't quite figure out whether he was squeezing Monroe, Monroe was squeezing him, it was 50-50. But whatever, the, whatever happened, it ended up with Rodriguez retiring from the race as a result of all, all that damage that was sustained. But he's got a very hungry Strauss behind him. Strauss is one of the drivers you do not want behind you because he does not make your life easy at all. He's always poking his nose in here and there. For anybody who watches... Uh, at BTCC, for example, a bit like Matt Neal, or if you watch uh, uh, VX Supercars, a bit like Craig Lowndes. Take, take the, just the natural line is for, for them is to go narrow anyway, so you know, when they take the natural line, they look like they're being aggressive anyway, and in the rear, you, the rear view mirror, you're just watching and you know, watching carefully, and it puts you off what you're doing. You saw the fast lap of the race there for Simon Kilo as well, so he's obviously got a great draft around this circuit at some point, because a 2.4 is almost impossible by yourself, unless you've got everything absolutely perfect, and Strauss still cannot get past the young Portuguese Pete Rodriguez. He has real life racing experience himself also. Kilo is back in ninth at the moment, but he's right on the back of that Strauss Kilo battle. And this is Keithley. Uh, he, he has Salo ahead of him. Strahan has got past Salo, so Strahan is up to second spot, and he's marching his way forward because look Ooh. at that little gap he just opened up from Salo going slightly wide and allowing uh, Keithley to have a little look on the inside. Strahan has went, oh, thank you very much. I'll open up a couple of hundred yards. And look, Talborg actually got past Davis on the exit as a result of the contact, because Davis hit the rear of Keithy's car trying to get up the inside on the exit of Luffield, and that just presented Talborg with the perfect opportunity to sweep around the outside of his fellow teammate and reigning champion. And now look as a result, Pedro Rodriguez is giving Davis all sorts of headaches on the rear bumper. Looking back, and there it is, car number 90, one of the generic Touring Pro Series default livery on this wonderful looking 2013 Clio. We saw Strauss trying to dive up the inside, but he himself is defending from Simon Kilov, who was an early championship contender, but unfortunately he has dropped out of contention and has said himself he's going to do all he can to help Jack Keithley win this title. He's back in ninth place, so we can't do too much to try to take too many points away from the two TH Orange cars, because we are directly uh, about three or four places in front of him, but he's trying to make it one more as he tries to make up the inside of Strauss. Got oh, it, left and right of shot, and he has got to squeeze his Strauss. Oh, oh that was one of the TH Orange cars. Davis off the track. Davis Davis back and that, that was well. Talborg. It was Talborg off wide. What's happened so here? They've both gone wide. Look, they're both back in ninth and tenth. Let's see look at the, replay. find out what happened. This is Talborg. Oh, oh he's been no. hit by his teammate, look. Oh, that is a carnal sin. Capital punishment for those drivers there. Davis has pushed 
and yes, it must be Davis who pushed Torborg wide, and now Torborg let back through by Davis. That's basically ruined their race. I don't think they're going to find their way back up past Jack Keithy from now on. And but Keithy will be grinning ear to ear on that one because he's now got past Salo at the same time. Back to live action. And uh, here is the situation. Look at Davis goes around the that. outside of Torborg, who was slowed up by Hack. Look at that, just sail straight around the outside. Uh, yes, but I'm fighting for this championship here, not you. Buff around the outside and tries to take that place again. And look at this. This is key. This is for third. This is Salo and Rasmus and Keithy up the inside towards Brooklyn. And Keithy has that third place now. So that is another key pass. And Rodriguez holding his own in fifth place, still ahead of, still ahead of Florian Strauss. And Rodriguez just closing a little bit. But all this time, look at this. Strana's pulling away from these guys. He's about, got about a nine tenths of a second gap to Larison, who's still the leader. So we've almost forgotten about him. These guys are getting in, in front. They tend to have uh, a pretty long lead, and then we just tend to forget about them because all the action is happening on, going on, on behind. This is Rodriguez all over the back of Pulse into Salo with Lawrence Strauss. Just, just, just to distract the driver behind, but it takes a little bit more than that. To uh, distract Mazar Salo, I have to say, but he's got a great run anyway. Despite the fact he was having a look, I thought maybe it would uh, compromise him, but he's got a great run. Didn't dive down the inside, though. That was probably the wise decision. He didn't have a huge overlap there, but <laughs> THR have another bullet in the gun here with Rasmus Salo, but he's not helping them out. You know, Keithy's just disappeared. It looks like Salo's really struggling for race pace, and um, it, maybe he's just ruining really, really his tyres very early on. I'm not quite sure what it is, but he's really struggling because now he's three wide. With Strauss, going to take two positions in one if he doesn't overcook it, and he just about has made it stick. Yes, he has the inside now going into Luffield. Strauss goes from sixth to fourth in one fell swoop. What a great opportunistic move there from Strauss. Next on his radar will be Jack Heathley. And that's going to be something which I think possibly is really going to worry Keith because he knows exactly how quickly quick Strauss is. He took, of course, that's podium fighting with Strana for the victory. Strana himself has brought the gap down to Larison by another three tenths, so the gap's down to 0.6. But we're still looking at this battle here for fifth, it, it, or fourth place rather. So Strauss is there in the 360 uh, kind of monster energy style looking car in fourth place. Then Rasmus Sala in the green THR machine, and Pete Rodriguez in the default TPS livery. And now he's got Simon Keel all over the, his rear bumper, and Simon Keel looks thought about a move on the inside. But look Rodriguez, he's capitalising on a poor exit from Salo, side by side down the Wellington Strait, but who's going to get possibly a little bit of a slipstream off Strauss in front at the moment, racing line and the, the slipstream advantage has gone, I think, at the moment to Rodriguez, because he's now right behind the 360 guy, and now back up at the front, we're seeing Larison has really been closed in by uh, Estrana, so the Swede is looking for a, ha a brace of victories here at Silverstone, whether or not he can get it is going to be one thing, it's always said, coined by the... Uh, called infamous line by Murray Walker, catching is one thing but passing is most certainly another and uh, it's been proved time and time again in these Cleos. I think uh, Tom will undoubtedly probably join us for one more, uh, one more event at the end of the season after this there's two more to go and I think we're going to have to ban him from making predictions about who's going to win the race. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't even mention his name and it, it just hasn't gone well is it? I don't think you should ask next time. I feel, I feel bad now. <laughs> oh poor Tom. Um, uh, Salo, you know, he's going pretty well, but he's just moving backwards the whole time. Isn't he? He's constantly defending, constantly offline. He's just not helping at all. Oh, Rodriguez, you know, has lost that position at some point too. Both Hat, Kilo, and Salo, because he got past, didn't he? We didn't notice that, but Kilo has now passed all of them. So something happened to Rodriguez, but he's gone straight past Salo once again. And Salo is just, just marching his way back, back into the midfield. He's not good for him at all. Yes, but Torborg and Toby Davis aren't making any inroads at all. They've got no. Gary Lennon behind to him. He's always a feisty driver. Not a good driver to be racing around when you're trying to make your way through the field. Everybody's so close. Oh, there goes Rodriguez wide. And through goes <laughs> Yes, but Torborg hit and wide. As goes Rodriguez again. Rodriguez was in fifth spot a lap ago. Made a mistake. He went back to uh, seventh or eighth spot. Back through went again. And then back to 11th. It's incredible stuff from Rodriguez. Poor guy. And what was funny with Salo, just he kept on attacking, he's like, no, kept back, back behind me, just kept giving him one after another to lump it the oh, side. There's, there's Rodriguez not much gives love it lost back, between like, Rodriguez and Salo, is there? Absolutely. No, those two, literally, that's, it's kind of a boxing match for all the race. It's absolutely fantastic between these two. And Rodriguez, now go on the attack of Lennon, and look at that, Rodriguez cocked a wheel uh, through Brooklyn's, uh, through Magus. I noticed that just on the uh, right rear of his clear was up in the air, so it just shows you just how stiff the front end of that car is. But now looking back from Gary Lennon, the Scotsman, in the ice cold racing Clio, this is now down towards Brooklyn once again. And Rodriguez again just had a little bit of a peep, but can't make it through. So this is now him just trying to make it through. Oh, and that's a car wide in the background. That's that must be 
That's Sobic, I think. It was a, it was a brightly coloured car. I think it must have yes, been Yes, there we are. You're absolutely correct. I thought so it was a car at first, but it was so bright. But, uh, yeah, exactly. I'm with Very Amaral, similar, those two. At least got up to 13 spot now, Amaral, without being taken out by Rodriguez. But he's getting closer and closer to Rodriguez, so I'm sure he's getting pretty scared. There's <laughs> three positions behind him now. Um, Just quickly, while we've got... We've got while we've got the middle of this race, in fact, actually, I'm going to go back towards the, uh, the, the front of the field. I was just about very, to mention very right <laughs> now. And, uh, but while it's all just calmed down just a little bit, the first person to comment I love Touring Pro Series on the spotter guide for this race on Touring Pro Series' Facebook, facebook.com slash Touring Pro Series, will win a Team OC and signed, I think, Tom, yes? Signed, signed cap? If, if you somebody? want me to deface this nice hat, if, I would well, happily Sign the do inside, that. perhaps. <laughs> sign the inside, perhaps. Uh, Tom, uh, Tom's very kindly offered those out to us. So the first person to comment, I love Touring Pro Series, on the spotter guide for this event on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Touring Pro Series, will win that signed cap from Tom Onzo Cole, courtesy of Tom Onzo Cole himself. So get on the Facebook page and type I love Touring Pro Series, because you all do anyway, so you may as well just type <laughs> it lots and lots of times. So, and also back to the lead of this race, Strahan versus Larrison, and I'm feeling quite smug right now because Strahan's doing quite well. And also we want to mention as well, of course, Tom's going to give a cap weight to, the dri to his driver of the, of the whole kind of race event as well. So these guys are not only fighting for points, they're also fighting for a very prestigious cap as well, which is going to be fantastic for them to try and earn as a prize. And I think, these I think two it's might almost a foregone collusion at the moment, isn't it, the way Strahan's going? Absolutely. Who's going to get the driver of the day? It's uh, well, not very difficult for Tom at all. No, well, it's a pretty impressive performance. The only thing I can say is that potentially I might give it to Sala just to make up for uh, my, my oh. class in the two races. <laughs> well, Strana's obviously listening because he's Into the relief of the race, look at that. While we've just been joking, Strana's went, oh, thank you very much, I'm through. <laughs> so, Strana is absolutely flying in this event. He's absolutely on fire. I'm just squeezing ahead of Larrison there. Larrison couldn't get any, any closer. Looking back now for Strahan at the position motorsports driver. Larrison has had plenty of wins this season so far. Strahan only won a race today. He qualified pretty well, kept himself right in the mix. And uh, as we were talking about, he has marched forward towards the front. The Ocean Men also mentioned Larrison, how he might have a strong race if he's away from that, that scrabble behind. And indeed, that's come to, uh, to, come to bear also. So Strahan doing very well here, and Larrison, they've got a 3.8 second lead over the championship leader, remember, Jack Keith. I know Jack's been involved in a bit of dicing, not as much as he was in the first race, but 3.8 seconds is a fantastic gap in these clothes. It's absolutely light years in these clothes, quite frankly. And now Larrison is challenging Strahan once again. We saw this when Strahan went past Florian Strauss in the last race, though. Strahan had to defend just for a couple of laps just to find his rhythm and get a small, small gap. Once he got the small gap, he was fairly comfortable. It has to be said from Strauss. He didn't have to defend too much. So we may see the same pattern happen here. But he's got past Larrison earlier this time than he got past Florian Strauss. At lap 14, lap 18, I think he got past Strauss in the first race. So we're still uh, nine laps to go at the end of this lap, which is there. So nine laps to go, 23 laps is this race. Strahan looking strong, Larrison right behind stalking. So of course it was uh, Strahan that was the one that was doing the attacking at this point. Now he's, it's rolls reversals, now he's the one doing the defending from a very feisty Alexander Larrison. And just behind him, looking at the times, half a second gap covers Keithy and Strauss for third. That's a pretty key one. And the rest of them seems to spread, spread themselves out a bit more because they're not all that close. There's Florian Strausser. There is fifth place is Simon Kilov. He really has moved up from his group position. There's sixth is Chris Hack in that distinctive pink uh, core racing car. Seventh place there is, is, uh, is that Toby Davis? Is he up, uh, yeah. Yes, it is. Then Gary Dillon, yes, but Tom Morgan, Peter Rodriguez, who's still 10th. And Chris Butcher really has moved. Last time I saw Chris Butcher, he was down in 16th. So he's moved up five places since we last saw him. So great great stuff from Chris Butcher. We've got a car running wide. That's one of the core racing cars. Very wide, in fact. Get out of the way of his team boss, Heinz Petzold. They obviously got a bit scared. Oh, I'm going to back in front of him. He'll be having me afterwards. Um, and he didn't. So everything was okay there. That's the field all gone through for you. So we talked about Chris Butcher, weren't we? How he's having a good start, a good race, actually. Up from uh, the 13th row, remember, he was 26th on the grid. So he's up to 11th. He's doing a Cervic from the first race. Cervic himself has moved backwards. Salo is back in 13th. After that, after set, starting on pole position, so not sure what's happened to him at all. That's quite incredible that uh, that he's dropped back that far. I don't think anyone expected that. You know, we make fun of, uh, of, of Tom giving him the jinx, but it, <laughs> it's not a laughing matter for Salo at all. It's obviously nothing to do with what, what Tom said. He just not had the pace, and uh, that's very surprising for all of us. None of, expect, none of us expected this. And it's it's, very, it's it's exactly the point that Tom Tom made you made earlier on. The fact that these guys. 
you know, you can be quick over one lap, but it compromises your race pace. And it looks like exactly that's what's happened with Salah. He's gone for a single lap pace, but hasn't really played the long game and thought about his race setup at all. He's probably gone for trying to get the pole position in race two, but obviously, as you can see, he's being mobbed by, by Cleo's left, right, and center. It just hasn't worked out for him. I think it's very difficult in that situation as well. Once you start sliding backwards, uh, you start defending into the odd corner here and there, and all of a sudden you lose two tenths and another two tenths. And before you know it, you, you, you're very much going backwards. We almost saw it with Keithley in, in race one. You know, he didn't quite have the pace. And although it wasn't extreme, you know, he, he was running at the front um, and, and then slipped back a little further as, thing, as things got rough. Do I want to continue to lead then? The gap is... Yeah, go on, go ahead. Gap is still tenth of a second. Still tenth of a second between these two. And Harrison just has not let the back bumper go. But there's a great battle going on here. This is... That's sick. He has got past Strauss. So whilst we're looking at Chris Butcher, he has at uh, Salo, uh, we have seen Kielov get past Strauss. So it's now Precision Cast third and fourth. And that really is going to hurt THR. Oh, it's huge contact. That was Strauss into the back of Simon Kiel. Missed his breaking completely, which is a bit late from darting out from behind the Dane. And that's now really ever the opportunity. Look at Chris Hack. Round the outside, he found himself in fourth place. Brilliant drive for Chris Hack. He's definitely had his cake and cookies today. He's, he's talking about earlier on that he's been off in the past couple of races and he usually has that as a bit of a snack to try and speed himself up. And now oh, he, really, he really has the main arms of Mr. Kickling. He really has uh, the Mary Lance of Mr. Kickling, I should say. He really got him there. And look at Strauss. Really defending Toby there as you forced him almost onto the pit wall there. Not as close, but he really gave him a bit of a sh shove towards the pit wall. Very, very forceful for Toby there. Definitely he's got his blood up at the moment. Up to sick and chasing after Simon Keel because he knows Every place he can make up in these final five or six laps is crucial to get to claw more points back towards Keithley, of course, who's in third place. The game's on the podium and a huge stack of points. So that really is going to help him towards his championship charge and increase that huge championship lead he currently has. And uh, great action there. It's a shame we now have to uh, bid a farewell to Tom. He's uh, almost completed the whole event for us here. And it's great, obviously, uh, to have him in the booth. I'm sure you as the spectators uh, have, uh, have been, uh, uh, enjoyed having him here. It's a privilege to have you, Tom. Thank you very much for having me. It's been uh, it's been brilliant racing as always, and I look uh, look forward to probably checking into the, uh, the the last event of the year to see how this all ends out. Yeah, if it ends anything like this, then we we will be uh, <laughs> we'll be definitely sweating on it. Plenty more action to come. Uh, winner of the, uh, the the Team OC hat, courtesy of yourself, Tom uh, Tom uh, for for typing in I Love Touring Pro Series into our fa into Facebook is Robert Wiesemuller. So congratulations to him for winning that. He's actually our virtual mini challenger. Uh, uh, reigning champion and a TPS admin so people will be shouting fix about that one <laughs> <laughs> uh, excellent to see that I will uh, I will have the hats in my hands uh, in the next few days and I will get those uh, sent out excellent stuff thank you very much once again Tom and we look forward to uh, you joining us once again in the booth uh, later in the season pleasure thank you. thank you for having me and uh, you know thank you for all the viewers to tuning into the series it's been a, a fantastic championship so far and I can only see the last few rounds being spectacular Thanks very much, Tom. For sure. Thank you, Tom. See you. Tom also called uh, the, uh, we call, call, call the dragging force uh, behind this series. Tom has called Cleo, so he's not called that for no reason at all. It's because he came to us and requested this virtual driving championship. And uh, hopefully, you know, we provided him with plenty of great action. And it's a pleasure and a privilege, of course, isn't it, Scott? to have uh, someone like Tom Ozzicol and, of course, his team, because his team, at the end of the day, uh, will foot the bill for the, for, for the prize. Have them involved is just uh, superb, isn't it? It is, and it really does help re raise the prestige level of a season like this of the Clios. And it really has raised the popularity, not only, of course, for, to, for Tom himself and Team Hard, but, of course, also, obviously, for Touring Pro Series. It really has brought a, 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 maybe a new audience that, that doesn't normally watch sim racing, going to get them involved and... Uh, helps to increase the popularity and that's really great to have him on board and we are as as we've said as we've championed so many times we are so so thankful for not having not only having Tom but of course Team Hard and all his partners like Cassio and Miltech and of course GamePod as well all those guys on board for not only for the clears but for supporting TPS in general and of course for that we are extremely grateful we could if we, we can say an endless thank you a million thank yous to all those guys especially Tom and Team Hard we could but we're not going to say any more because it'll <laughs> sound like we're uh, we're bowing down to, to Tom yeah. <laughs> he's, he's He's horrible off the air. No, we're joking. We're joking. He's not horrible <laughs> off the air. He's a lovely, lovely guy, and uh, really an uh, absolute pleasure to deal with uh, both off the air and uh, and uh, obviously on the air as well. He's uh, an absolute top bloke, and uh, 
That's the reason why he's so popular in BTC circles as well. And obviously a very talented driver, you know, won plenty of races in the British Touring Car Championship and has been peddling that brand new Team Hard Volkswagen pass out, you know, to several podiums this season. So he's done fantastically well. As we see Kilo down the inside of Chris Hack for fourth position. Chris kind of saw that one coming, didn't defend too much, and he's back to fifth because he knows, well, if he, oh, I just let this, let this Kilo go through. I'm not going to lose any more than this. You know? But if he starts battling, Davis and Lennon pull, pull, pull into him. And Chris is a very intelligent racer, raced him before, and he sees the big picture, Scott. We see this time again, don't we, that he, you know, he doesn't battle too hard. He knows when to move, move over or not to move over, as the case may be. He's one of those kind of types like um, it, he has a mind kind of a bit, bit like Alan Prost or Fernando Alonso. He doesn't he doesn't always just go all out for the win. He knows if he needs to. That's not that's not praising too highly. That's not praising too much. <laughs> no, <joking. laughs> no, no, sorry, carry on, Scott. <laughs> But, but you, know, you know what I mean, that kind of that, main, that mentality the same as you get with Alonso and Prost, where they don't necessarily go for the win, they go for whatever position that they can manage, and, and once they're in the position that they either they need or they, that they, they're content with, they don't try and fight it too much, they just kind of sit there and try and maintain whatever gap they have it is to the car in front of the car behind, just to make sure they can just, just solidify and just make that position and that finish a certainty. So, great stuff from Chris. He, he didn't fight it too much, but he knew if he stayed close, he could definitely t capitalise on any mistake that he could potentially pressure Simon into. So, moving into the last couple of laps of this second race, it's been not as uh, not as hectic as race one, but it's still been very entertaining and very intriguing to watch. Still plenty to talk Eric about, here. It still has. Plenty to and, talk about. Uh, especially this man right here, Eric Strana, who's on court. I don't want to curse it. I really hope I don't, but... <laughs> don't do a Tom. Lap, don't do a Tom, could, Scott. You know how it <laughs> works. <laughs> he could... If, if, that's, that's if, if <laughs> nothing better, goes wrong, better. could be looking at a brace of wins for the Swedes. On to the final lap, he's got a gap of about four tenths of a second. It looks good, but it's not all over until he goes past the checkered flag. Absolutely not. And, and we know how much a small mistake costs, how much it costs you around here. Just a small mistake. And he yes. will be breathing quite hard in that car right now, I'm pretty sure. He will be very, very nervous. And just imagine this, Scott. You know, You've never won a Clio Series race before. You've only ever won once in the TPS. You've not been around sim racing for a long, for, for a very long time. You know you're a young driver. You know late teens that he's in. You know you're, you're not too too much older than him yourself. And you're out on track, winning two races um, against the powerhouses of THR and Precision right in front of Tom Alonso Cole. And that is just absolutely incredible. We'll get a reaction on that, Scott, in just a minute's time. But we need to congratulate really Eric Strahan. He has produced a fantastic event, intelligent racing, fast, fast times, and he is going to win two races out of two in the eighth round of the Tom Onzo Cole Clio Series here from Silverstone. What a performance from the young Swede. He wins the second race here. He trebles his TPS career victory, flashes his lights across the line. He will be delighted with that. So will Lauritsen. That was a great run from himself also. Backs up his fourth place in the first race. Jack Keith extends his championship lead once again. It looks like it's going to be all over in the championship, really. So, fourth spot for Kilo. Fifth for Hat. Great result for him. Sixth and a seventh for Toby Davis. That's not what he wanted before this event. We know how much of a lottery it can be. And the, and the problems he had also. I'm sure that impacted on, on it. And we'll try and get a word on that also after this. Uh, we run through these results. Lennon and Torborg, seventh and eighth. Rodriguez, ninth. Strauss, tenth. One of those races where you saw that he couldn't get out, out of the pack and therefore couldn't get you know, towards the front <laughs> and ended up being mired, didn't he? 11th spot with Butcher, 12th is Hughes, the 13th Amaral, nice solid result for him after the troubles he has had in the last few races. 14th for Servic, backs up his 11th in the first race, he'll be pleased with that. 15th spot is Maliszewski, 16th spot Adams, 17th uh, Salo. So he qualified on pole, remember. He didn't spin off at any point whatsoever. He just did not have the pace at all. I wonder if he left his qualifying settings in or just didn't have his brain screwed on. Maybe it's very, very hot in his room. He lost concentration. That's very easy to do, of course, as well. 18th spot for Powell. 19th spot for Petzold. 20th for Pekla. With 21st is Matt Richard. 22nd, Jacobs. 23rd, Jay Adger. Didn't talk too much about Jay Adger in this event, actually. He's been creeping up the championship standings quite a bit. 24th is Ockerklins. And that was that, Ockerklins was the last of the drivers who finished this race. But I want to quickly get your reaction, uh, Scott, just before we go to a quick break, before the driver interviews, on, uh, you know, put yourself in Strahan's shoes. He's, he's just won his second and third race of his TPS career, and he's done it in front of a real-life BTCC race winner, uh, probably a, a little bit of a hero of his, Tom Oz Cole. 
I think it's safe to say my reaction probably that's similar of when Mark Webber won his first race and the team radio on that one. So uh, a lot of shouting yes and probably some expletives as well. But I won't say them obviously for the because it's a family show and everything. But you know I, I would be absolutely over the moon. Obviously it's a similar situation for myself. Of course I'm I want to get into sim racing personally myself a little bit more. But uh, at the end of the day it's a fantastic job from Australia to, to grab a brace of victories as you said in front of Tom. So of course he's been extremely impressive. Of course I'm sure we'll get. Uh, Tom to inform us of his driver of the day. It might be Eric, it might be someone different, but um, I think great stuff from Eric. He's been absolutely overjoyed with that one. Hopefully we can get his reaction to that one if he's around, possibly to speak to him, and uh, that'll be absolutely brilliant. But, as we said, great stuff, and uh, not only is that key for the championship, because of course it's more or less Keith extending his championship lead, and uh, to Toby Davis experiencing problems, but of course it puts him into the into, into the frame of mind that if, that's where possibly he could have been if he'd done a complete season in these clears, because he could have definitely have been a championship contender. So those are the, that's the result of the race. Two excellent races, especially the first half of that first race. God, I was exhausted oh, yeah. after that. I know any different for the rest of it. I'm glad <laughs> it was a, bit, a little bit calmed down because uh, I don't think we uh, would, would have coped. The, I think we would have lost Scott. He would have melted into his seat. Yeah, with, and with the, with the heat we've got doesn't help. So obviously you get that 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 heated racing plus the heat of the weather in the summer right now. It uh, yeah, you get quite hot under color, hot under the collar, quite literally. So we're going to go to a quick break here. We're back in just a couple of minutes' time, and we'll be speaking to the drivers and getting their reactions. Be right back. GamePod, the ultimate race rig for those serious about sim racing, puts you in the driver's seat with all the controls at your fingertips. Be number one on the road, in the race, in the game. GamePod, the choice of champions. Inside SimRacing.tv, the fastest show on the internet. Sim racing news and reviews since 2007, with new shows every week. Hello and welcome back to another excellent TPS broadcast, if I do say so myself, uh, from the Thomas O'Cole Clio Series, eighth round of the championship from Silverstone. We saw lots and lots of action, didn't we, Scott? And now we're going to get a word from the drivers and their reaction to what happened out there as well. And of course, we're going to start naturally with the driver of the day, the driver of the day who will win a signed also Team OC, Thomas O'Cole cap as well as you're the driver of the day. And it's Eric Strahan. Very well done to you, Eric. What a fantastic result for you. You surely can't have dreamed of that. Well, dreaming is always free, uh, but I could never actually imagine it happening. I mean, uh, I, I just like these new Cleos. It just, they just fit me a lot better than last ones. And uh, this everything played out like I wanted to. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to complain about anything, really. I mean... <laughs> So let us into your secret, because last night I, I was obviously practicing the event, I didn't anticipate commentating for it, and you know, you know how frustrated I was talking, talking to you then and, and talking about how difficult the racetrack was. What did you do to unlock this, uh, this, this, this track? Was it, was, it, was it the practice session with Chris Shepard that really helped you? Because I know you two were driving together you know, a lot during practice, even though Chris doesn't uh, take part in the championship. Well, I think it was just down to the sheer amount of laps I did. I mean, I think I, before first quality start, I think I've done somewhere around, you know, 300 laps, which is probably twice as many as I usually do. So, I mean, that that with Chris really helped because then I was changing about with um, a bunch of settings on the car, which I hadn't really done before. 
and then yeah talking to you i realized how annoyed you were and i mean that and to to be really honest that kind of like just edged me to do it to you know to do it a little bit more like you said and um yeah it, i don't know what to say i'm kind of speechless so 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 i can take the credit excellent stuff i'll take the credit for those two <laughs> wins then thank you very much <laughs> no i'm kidding obviously fantastic job by yourself eric i mean you've tripled trebled however you say it um your TPS race win uh, history now. We've gone from one before the race to now three. Um, do you think you can win more races at the end of the season? There's four races to go. Can you win all four? Uh, well, I'm not going to say no because <laughs> you get annoyed with how pessimistic I am, but not all four, I think, is <laughs> no, pushing yeah. it. But yeah. may, I mean, maybe one, one or two if I can, you know, if everything falls to, all the pieces fall to the right places like they did today, then I think it's definitely within reach. But all four, I think, is a bit of a long shot, to be honest. And you're in a great run recently, aren't you? Because obviously you got the third place at Lauren Park um, just uh, four days ago. And two third places, sorry, should I say. It was two third places, wasn't it? It was two third places, yeah, I'm correct. Yes, two third. And then, um, uh, and then you've come here and taken two wins. It must be the, the, on cloud nine right now. Yeah, it's, I'm getting into the stride, I guess. It's, something's unlocked. I'm not sure why. I'm, yeah. He's quietly pleased, isn't he? You can hear it in his voice. He's, he's, he's satisfied. He's sat there with a big smug grin on his face. Oh, I, and, I have been for the, I have been for the past it, hour. And to, <laughs> and to do it in front of Tom on the call as well. I mean, Tom was watching the whole broadcast, and you're his driver of the day for obvious reasons. I mean, how does that feel? Because you, obviously you've watched Tom on TV and driving, and, and, and well, I'm sure you've sure watched him on TV at least in a way, and you've seen his win, yes. race, win races on TV, and that, you know. And uh, it must be, it must feel great to do that in front of, you know, what will be a, a little bit of a hero to you. It really does. I mean, I was thinking about it during. Uh the final laps of race two like was Tom actually watching the races kind of thing because I mean everything can happen and then we and then he ends up doing and I, I had no idea about the signed cap thing that was completely new to me I was surprised hey, we didn't know honest. before the broadcast either no that's... oh okay oh I he thought sprung it on us just like you... five minutes before and going oh yeah, yeah he, by the way he, there's, he... Uh, there's some caps <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah I'm like, oh, okay we'll just do it with an impromptu giveaway that's fine <laughs> oh oh I thought it was a reg okay okay well that makes sense but yeah it feels great and just great timing to put it that way yeah, they, they certainly know how to time it. So congratulations to you, Eric, and uh, good luck in the rest of the season. Scott, you've got Jack Keithley, and uh, he will be very quietly pleased with the results from this event. I don't think so. Uh, Jack, let's have a chat with you there. Uh, brilliant results for you. You finished, I think it was fifth in race to race one and a podium in race two with third. Uh, more importantly, um, I think might as well get to the, the main point of what we were talking about. Um, Bear in mind what happened with THR, that's definitely strengthened your championship lead, hasn't it, with those results? Certainly has. I mean, race two, the whole time I was, when I had like a, a small gap to the guys behind, I was saying just keep on, just really focus, you know, and just, just take it a bit easy as well, you know, think about the championship. and Yeah, but I just want to say quickly about race one. Uh, I was a bit mental to start, and I just want to say sorry to Jesper, I did, I did go into the back of him, it was a mistake from me, and yeah. Uh, it kind of damaged my car, maybe more than his, so... Uh... Sorry, I just had to move Scott out there, because he had problem with, with his mic. Carry on, Scott. Oh, Scott's uh, now <laughs> testing his mic. I'll, I'll continue interviewing Jack. Sorry about that, guys. No, no, it's, 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 oh, yes, it's fine. Uh, when, if, 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 when Jack's speaking, I'll meet my mic, that's fine. So, no problem. Um, sorry about that, Jack. Carry, carry on. Uh, I think finished his point. He was just saying about uh, um, it's obviously pleasing with, with the results and uh, it basically gained points on both of them. Absolutely. Um, of course, w w were you a little surprised at the fortunes of, of Toby and Jesper today? Because they were up there near the front, but it seems to be that in both races they got kind of got caught up in one or two battles and they eventually slipped down near the order but to the bottom of the top ten. Um, so I can't imagine they'd be too pleased about that. But of course, for you guys, it, it must be absolutely fantastic. Not only for uh, in the drivers' championship, but of course, going towards the teams' championship. Because of course, you guys were, were, were managed to achieve a stack of points uh, towards potentially taking over that lead image in the team standing as well. Certainly. I mean, I've just had a quick look at the team standings. I think we still need to get a bit more, a bit more points to each other to maybe get ahead of them. But yeah, I was a bit surprised with their. Um, pace maybe but I think as well we've uh, improved our especially our race pace quite a bit you could see with Alex who was bound for the lead I was third and Simon was fourth and but as well this sort of track you can't afford a mistake and you will get some people who are just good round here and yeah and Str Strand definitely uh, uh, 
show that today. One thing I did want to touch on as well, I think just to quickly wrap this up, speaking to you, Jack, and we did, we did see in race one, <clears throat> excuse me, that um, Alexander Larrett's your teammate. Um, he actually got pa he got past you at one point, and he got to the point where you guys were running nose to tail. Um, what was what was going on there? Was it was it were you pretty battling on a trap between each other? Were you giving uh, Larrett the chance to gain a few more points to the table, or was it just pure the case that Alex was faster than you? And you know, because I would have thought, obviously, with yourself being the championship leader, and of course the one going for the championship, that you could do do with every point you can get. So, um, just talk to what was going on there with Alex. Were you just helping him to increase his points tally? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I know I might need every point I can get, but as well, I like to help out the other drivers, and if if I can make them happy without hurting myself, really, I'll do that, you know, and, uh, yeah, Alex, he was a bit, he did seem to be a bit better than me as it sort of progressed on, and didn't really see much point in holding him up, so I thought, yeah, go ahead and see if we can both uh, catch up, so, uh, and a catch, yes, but of course. Of course. Uh, well, of course, you've got some great results today. Of course, it has definitely, as we said, uh, maintained your championship lead by quite a margin, of course. You definitely took advantage of that. Uh, well done today. And, of course, you go to the final two rounds, uh, obviously, with a certain favourite to win the championship. Of course, I'm not sure how if it could possibly happen, but I guess if results go, go your way, you could even potentially wrap up the championship um, as soon as one of the races destined bearing res if results go your way. But uh, w w whether, regardless of what happens... Well done today, and uh, best of luck going forward to the last two rounds. Thank you very much. Okay, I believe, uh, Ryan, you have, well, not, I believe you have Florian Strauss with you to have a chat with. Yeah, I'm going to have a chat with, with Florian here. Um, Florian, so, so close to getting that elusive TPS win to break that, uh, that streak you've got of not winning since early 2012. Uh, but it was a great run for yourself, wasn't it? Especially considering you were asking me about two hours before the event for setup tips. Yes, it was a great run, and so haven't expected. So I'm very happy. I mean, you, Eric was, just, was a little, oh, that sorry, little bit on. faster in the end, so he was he well deserved to win. Yeah, I mean, could you have done anything else to 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 hold? Help, uh, held Eric back for the you know a few more laps or were you, were you pushing as hard as you could yeah of course um but I, I hope to catch him in the end but there was no chance to, to overtake him and it showed plenty of promise obviously in the second race it was the story of getting caught up in you know, in the midfield battle and it's it's very difficult to get through that group isn't it yeah it's, it's very tricky so especially turn two it's uh very easy to to lose the car on the braking so and just make too much mistake and a little bit stupid move on on Simon so very sorry for that. I'm sure Simon isn't isn't feeling too bad about it because he ended up finishing in fourth place. Uh, anyway, after that, after of course you let let him through and uh, you dropped back from from there. But a second and a tenth is probably a little bit better than you expected because that tenth spot we know was obviously on this particular kind of track. It was so so difficult to get past people and stuck in that melee like, like we've talked about uh, uh, so much. Um, with that pace that you've shown uh, both here and at Croft, in fact, actually, I mean, you must be optimistic in the final two rounds of the season. Do you think you can snatch a win? Oh, uh, so before the race today, I was thinking maybe I can, can get into the top 10, but you never know. So I, we will see in, in the race. I. I'm looking forward, and it seems that uh, the new duo fits me a little bit better than the old one. And it is, uh, I had fun today, so it's okay. That's the most important thing, of course, as well, because none of us are here to get paid. We're all here to have plenty of fun. Now, Scott, uh, you've got uh, Scott Cervic, uh, your namesake. Uh, Scott uh, <laughs> obviously had a, a couple of uh, good runs here today, and uh, still running that commemorative uh, livery. Absolutely. Um, Scott, obviously fantastic couple of races for you. Oh, a couple of uh, runs inside the top ten at some points. Uh, I think that think these two races, they definitely made up for the uh, disappointment of your hundredth race where you didn't make it further than the first couple of laps. Definitely. Um, I think that I'm a bit speechless because kind of, I was very disappointed after Croft. Now, I've, I found that consistency in the car that I need in order to stay in Division 1, and that is really what my aim is now. 
it's just to stru- try to stay in Division 1 as long as possible and try to get those good positions consistently. But unfortunately, not a top 10, but overall, I think it was pretty good. Uh, pretty good two races. Because you're mostly battling uh, p- pretty hard with some guys down the bottom end of the top 10 around there and just outside it. Um, and as you said, just missed out. You finished 11th in race 1 and 14th in race 2. Um, Course, as you said, your pace was pretty good. Are there any other positives you can take from this weekend? Because you certainly looked as though, at some points, you definitely had a, a, a definite, decent turn of pace in you, in you at some points. Well, I do. I, I can take the fact that I not only do I have good pace, but I do feel like I've gotten this defending nonsense uh, quite good. <clears throat> so I, I feel I can probably get, you know, like 8th, 7th. Next run, but I I feel like I've been really good at the Silverstone track very often, and um, so I really doubt I'll be able to do this get a re- result like these at Snetterton. But um, we'll have to see. I'm not sure. What well, I just going to quickly mention to wrap up. I mean, of course. I said next round is less than a couple of weeks. You said you're not sure about it. Um, is it a circuit you enjoy? Do you reckon that possibly if things go your way, you could potentially get a couple of top tens? I enjoy it, yes, but um, I'm not. I've never been very quick there. My um, I had I've had some bad luck there during the I've raced there, but hopefully I can get get that top ten. Hopefully even sixth would be my TP, which would be a TPS best for me, but um. I said I I really don't know I I hope that I can get a good result and I hope I can get the tire wear sorted for that race because that that does tend to be more of a problem around uh, around Snetterton but with these new cars they tend to wear less on the tires and it means that you can push a lot a lot more often than you could with the old 2008 Clio I I th- I feel that that's helped me a lot and uh, I d- uh, I think I can go. I think I can have a good race for um. We'll see. Well, anything can happen at TPS. It's most of the case it usually does. Um, but uh, well done for today, Scott, on a half fought race to 11th and 14th. And fingers crossed you can get a good result uh, in the next, in the last two rounds of the season. And I believe, unless you've got any, anyone else, Ryan, I believe that rounds our interviews. I think, unless you've got anyone else that you can uh, find to have a chat to. to. I just wanted to mention um, uh, Division 2 drivers. We don't usually mention them on the show. We do uh, yes. keep meaning to. But uh, Division 2, uh, there was uh, two races as well. If you're not familiar, just quickly for the viewers, if you're not familiar what happens at the, at the TPS, we often run uh, these events, and there are two divisions. There's Division 1 and Division 2. And two, races happen, uh, two events happen at the same time, so you have four races on one night. And people in Division 2 uh, compete to get promoted into Division 1, and that's done via the championship standings. And therefore, there's an overlap between the top of Division One, uh, top of Division Two in points, and the bottom of Division One. So, say you finish 25th in Division One, it's not as good as winning in Division Two. So, you can get promoted on that basis through the championship. Uh, the winners in Division Two were Lee Palmer. He'll be pleased with that, and also very pleased will be Dave Simmons. And Dave is in the booth here. Dave, can we can we get a word with you? Yes, we can get a yeah. word with Dave. Hello. Excellent stuff. You must be absolutely chuffed. That is your first TPS victory. Unfortunately, it doesn't count because it's Division 2. But in your That's mind, true. it will. <laughs> in my mind, it does count. That's for sure. Yeah. That uh, second race was absolutely epic. Uh, me and Lee swapped, swapped uh, positions several times. Clean, fair, no contact. Way by day, to be honest. Excellent stuff. And the, you obviously come back into the Clio's to replace Rasmus. Um, for, uh, for for optimum sim race, you must be loving it back now. Then with the with the results you're getting, I am. Yeah, I, I seem to like this new car quite a bit. Um, that's part of the reason why I stepped aside because I wasn't quite as quick as the other guys. And Rasmus is is a is an awesome driver. But since we know what happened there, um, I stepped back in, liked the car, and yeah, I'm enjoying it. Excellent. So that's uh, that's Dave, who's who won uh, race two in Division Two today, and Lee Palmer won race one. That's going to wrap up our interviews uh, for now. Jonathan Otterclins is in here. I really want to speak to him quickly. We don't really have time, but Jonathan obviously qualified well and uh, didn't go too well in the uh, in, in the end in those races, but showed promise in that second race. Whereas Chris um, kind of had uh, the opposite happen in race one to race two. Uh, he went from uh, the front to the back in race one, and then from the back to the front 
in race two. So that wraps up our driver interviews for today. Uh, final words, Scott, on, uh, on today's action? Well, I think first of all, again, we have to say once again, thanks very much to to, to, to Tom, Tom Oslo Coles, taking the time out this evening to uh, be a fantastic, I think, um, kind of analytic kind of pundit for us tonight, as well as providing some great insights as to what it's like to drive Silverstone and, and his exploits so far this season. So again, massive thank you to him for coming on board and giving his analysis for tonight. As for the racing, electric first half of the rate uh, first half of the first race you could hardly catch our breath for all of them um and obviously then that settled down and uh, of course the second race was not as dramatic but still pretty entertaining but the main point we can take away is of course a couple of things or three things in fact um one was of course jack Keith has extended his championship lead, of course, with the results he got today. Two, THR struggled. Uh, Toby Davis and Jesper Tolborg ran out the front a couple of times in both races, but didn't really uh, finish in the positions they wanted to. But the main point is we have to congratulate, of course, Eric Strana. Two wonderful victories, uh, which he really will be... I know he's absolutely chuffed with. Of course, he's got that signed cap for driver of the day as well, so congratulations for him. And, of course... What I'm looking forward to the next round, for me personally, of course, it's the next couple of rounds at Snesterton because, of course, it's my home circuit. So uh, we're running the 200 layout rather than the 300s because it's a bit too long for 300s. But uh, 200s pretty much goes back to the old circuit, and I love the place um, purely because it is my home circuit, and it's a great track to race. A lot of drivers like it as well. High speeds, long straights, uh, tighter corners as well with the chicanes and, and that kind of stuff. So great circuit, and I'm looking forward to it. So... We're getting close to crowning a champion here, and these last two race meetings, Snesson and then Knock Hill, they're going to be mind blowing. And I seriously, not only because it's a home circuit, but for the racing it's sure to provide, especially with these brand new Clears, I can't wait for two weeks' time. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Oh, fantastic. So that's on the 31st of July at the same time. So quarter to eight for you guys in the UK, quarter to nine if you're if you're in Central Europe, and of course, so on and so forth throughout. Uh, the kingdoms throughout the world. Yes. And uh, as you see, you've got Stetterton next, and then uh, Knock Hill is the finale after that. Uh, in some ways, I kind of hope the uh, Hamilton wrapped up before we go to Knock Hill, because that could be a bit rowdy at Knock Hill, having uh, oh, the yes. clears around that track. But uh, we, we hope it's not all in many ways as well. So uh, looking forward to that. Next event coming up in the Touring Pro Series. Of course, we don't just uh, have the Tom and Cole Clear Series. We have the Virtual V8 Supercars as well. That's coming up on the tw 27th of July. As you can see, we already talked about it. Sandown. Fabulous, fabulous track. Looking forward to that race as well. It's a fabulous uh, um, uh, format we've got as well. 200 kilometers on sprint tyres. It always leads to uh, plenty of drama as uh, tyre wear becomes a massive factor along with those pit stops as well. And, um, and also, in the winter time, currently we're in the summer period and we're running just two leagues at the moment. The Virtual Beat Supergirls and Tom Olsen Cole. Two longer leagues. In the winter time, we will be running more leagues. So don't worry. Not, when these end, we do go on to other things. So uh, in winter time, we'll run the virtual touring masters, which will be fantastic. Those are usually older touring cars from that the 70s and 80s kind of era. And then we'll, we'll also run the virtual super tech series, which is uh, cars that um, be winged and uh, be a moth, you know, have great power and, and look fabulous and uh, fairly modern. That's, that's the kind of thing we use in the super tech series that we'll be running on probably on game stock car during uh, the winter period also as well and we'll also have the virtual mini challenge back once again for its third iteration and uh, that will be run on stock car with the uh, the minis on there as well virtual mini challenge kind of that's what it says on the tin so thank you to all the drivers thank you to all the spectators thank you to all the sponsors everybody who makes the people who make the game people who make the tracks people who make the cars thank you to ryan callan put it all together i'm joking and then uh, thank you to drivers <laughs> as well for entertaining us of course today without the drivers we wouldn't be entertained at all um, so it's been fabulous, fabulous events, and we look forward to seeing you again next time uh, in the Cleo series on the 31st of July. But make sure you tune in, because Thomas and Cole will be as well. So if he's tuning in, then you have to tune in as well. That's the deal. Um, and that will be on 27th of July, as you can see. Uh, until then, have a great time, and take it easy. Bye-bye. GamePod, the ultimate race rig for those serious about sim racing, puts you in the driver's seat with all the controls at your fingertips. Be number one on the road, in the race, in the game. GamePod, the choice of champions.
is over! 